Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Beer Googles. Double E. Double O. Double G. With Chris Woodsy Peralta and Mark Poles. From the home office in Gilbert, Arizona. Chill out. Very well done. <laughs> what up? We Buenvenidos. Are, we are taking full advantage of our video, sir. De Google de cervezas. like to welcome some people. All we, the people. We have a gentleman, uh, happen to be, today is uh, December 30th. Yeah. 2020. Sure. Happy pre-New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve Eve. Don't you hear say that? New Year's Eve. Yeah, I do hate New Year's Eve Eve. Because it almost sounds like a double negative. But it really sure. is just a continuation of the original Eve. It's, you know. It's mega Eve. Pre-pre. The pre-pre. Yeah, the pre-pre <laughs> works. So <laughs> this, so, um. Happened to be in Vegas uh, over Christmas. Yes. Drove, drove home on Christmas. Ghost town. Holy mackerel. I s literally saw sagebrush come across. You I heard crickets. Face. And heard. <whistles> Why'd you eat the ice cream off the floor? It's high noon. I didn't even know ice cream. It was. Anyway. So what was, what was missing, though, was my socials. My social media was way down. Oh, you okay? Because you know what? Well, I'm not a fan. But self promotion is. Did you uh, go to therapy? So I self promoted, and then I got some guy Andy, and I forget his exact. Uh, it's Andy. I'd have to look it up in the and scroll down, but I want to give him a quick shout out. He said your podcast is crazy. Oh yeah, I recall that. So then Exchange. I said, do you mind expounding on like what crazy, crazy is? bad right, or crazy lunatic? I said I'll take it as a compliment, regardless, even if he meant bad. But he he gave us very positive feedback. That's amazeballs. And in in light of all that, I would like to. Um, Get right to the point. Okay. Because we are beer, even though it's beer Googles and we're having fun. You're doing well. You look well. See, si, Jess, thank you so much. We're going out to dinner tomorrow for yeah. New Year's Eve. That'll be hey, nice. Sushi time. You, Megzi, myself, and hey. a fourth. Blue -la. Blue -la. Oh, yes. Yeah, so what was hey. funny, Roca Accor, it took me like, I knew something was interesting about that name. I didn't, it was just backwards. The steaks looks pretty cool too, though. Yeah. Accor Roca? Roca Accor? Roca Accor. So you think Roca, they're out of Accor. order? No, no, I'm just saying it's Roca backwards. I didn't. Oh. It's Roca, A. it's R-O-K-A-A-K-O-R, -A -A right? Roca Accor. So we're hoping that it's going to be as good as Ocean 44 was for our birthdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, we don't know. So it's the same word backwards then. I didn't get that. Yeah, that's um, weird, right? Yeah. But it looked... Something about it looked right, yeah, unique, but I wasn't able to pick up on it. And then I went, Is it? It was so simple, it was like forest for the trees kind of thing. Oh, so today, you know what? Uh, I saw a meme today. It says, My favorite new word is booby trap because when you spell it backwards, it's party boob. <laughs> <laughs> I had not ever the oatmeal. heard that before. The oatmeal is a funny, the guy's a funny cartoonist, it's not as good as the onion. No, it's probably better than the onion. No, it's totally it's all uh, it's all uh, comics. There's no oh, okay. it's all like drawings. Got it. There's no That's yeah, hilarious. It's really funny. Well, in the vein of today, what what's going on today? What are what's what are we going, having? What's going on? We're having a beer Googles. Jays. Um I forget. We do listy things. We started getting into listies and some listies were fun. So we can shit on We do on them one every week. month or so, probably, yeah. right? We're, yeah, we're a little listy heavy on the beer Googles, but the beer Googles are about fun and what we dig up on the internets. The cyber webs. We, we get drunk. So please, sir, take take My it away. Coffee. What are we talking about? Uh, weird, and unusual, strange, muy strange, American traditions. Okay. C and customs. Customs also and traditions tangent. that might not be universally. Yes. They're pretty much to the U.S. of A. Beautiful. Well, we are going to get right into it because we've got a list of. A listy list. We've got two of them, but we know that they're A listy listers. I got it, got it, need it, got it, got it, need it, got it, got it, need it. It's like baseball cards. Oh, yes. That's how listies work when you're on the internet. You know, it's like 52 original customs, 136 original customs. They include 51 of the other ones. You know, it's uh, one of those types of things. So that's what we're hoping. What? Okay. Like the one article has 52 crazy customs, and the other article is like 120. But of those 120, 51 are in the other article. Okay, is what I, I yes. So. Meow. Meow. So go. Go. Numero uno. What happens in the U.S. that not anywhere else in the world? Number one, drinking coffee on the go. Mira. Get out of here, bro. Coffee on the go. You came in with Sucka. a coffee. You, you even came and said, may I borrow your microwave? Yeah, because I had to nuke it because it wasn't hot enough because I like it borderline scorching. So you would not have sued McDonald's. 
I would not have sued have, McDonald's for any reason. You would have praised praised them. I would be like, damn, that's some hot coffee. You would have good fat job. Bo- you would have fat Here's boy slim. Here's four dollars. You would have fat boy slim praised them. What I'm talking about like they should. I'm with you, but McDonald's has some shady coffee practices, my friend. Well, they did, and then we talked about we, that, we, and now we, they don't, and we fixed now. them. Yeah. Uh, Ill regardless. Tell us about this coffee on the go. What about it? Anything special about uh, it? Blah, 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 blah. People in other countries drink it differently than the United States. Most international coffee customs are more about the communal ritual of sharing a cup of coffee in a coffee shop with friends, while Americans opt for the less eco-friendly alternative. An extra large paper cup and plastic to go cup. Boom, plastic to go cup. That's not, that's a ceramic, isn't plastic. that a ceramic green? Oh, that's, but that's reusable though, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. But I think when they mean plastic go cup, they mean yeah, like disposable. disposable cup, yes, correct. That would suck. I'm a big fan of reusing my, Absolutely. that's why I have a couple. And it's BPA they, free? They go in, I hope, it better be because I just fucking put it in the microwave. Uh, oh shit. Mm, B, mm, B, those B, BPAs. Delicious. Like GMOs. What's the what's uh, MSGs. MSGs. Yes. That's good for your head. Mm. For your noggin, I bet MSGs All are delicious. All up in those shrimp fried rice, bro. <laughs> I will tell you. Yeah. MSG makes every Asian food place taste better. Like Duh. monosodium glutamate is like, hello. Uh, yes, please. Can I get an extra MSG? Sodium glutamate. E- I don't, I'm MSG. not even gonna mess. Okay, that's an awesome one. So basically, what they're saying is, we like to drink our coffee on for ourselves for fuel. They like it as a means to hang out together, like for yes, communal, like, like hanging out at a at a bucks. Yeah, but yeah. I do agree that I would much rather sit at, at the kitchen table and slowly enjoy my cup of coffee. Then I then drink it in the car. I I would way prefer that to be nice and casual and relaxed and just enjoy it. It's kind of a little process. It's a culture thing, though. Yeah. Oh no. Because Europe is not on the go like we are. We are yeah. still like twenty four hour stores and always in a rush. Always have something to run to. And there's a lot of a manana lifestyle. Very, uh, they have. They still have. They they're closed for an hour. Siesta. You know, siesta right? Siesta time and whatnot. That's an amazing mental health or physical like it's a healthy way to live it's a cool way to live i agree but we're just so on the go we don't have time to relax and really enjoy it except for a night like if we schedule like coffee time at a place but with covid going on you could still do that right in arizona you can california you can't well unless you're the governor or like you know higher ups in the if you're a politician you can do whatever the fuck you want okay and tell us not what to not systems bro Systems. Systems. Well, would you like to hear my first American I, tradition? No, no. That not everyone celebrates? Yeah. Baby showers. Shut the front door. I was going to say gender reveal parties because we've had, what, <laughs> now three forest fires due to gender reveal parties or something? <laughs> uh, there, did you see the Tucson one? I think no. I told, talked to you about Wait. the Tucson one. There's one, okay, so there was one that was the big one, the 7,000 acre one in Cal- California. California. That was yeah. the most recent one, right? Yeah. Once again, today's December 30th, 2020. It was only, it was like four months, three, four, few it was months August. Ago. Yes, it was a few months August. ago. And they thought like they had claims that, not QAnon, but somebody set them on fire. Bullshit. Like it was bullshit claims. Uh, Antifa or some whatever. Anyway, turns out it was gender reveal. There's one in Tucson from a couple of years ago, actually, already, that the guy shot it and the fucking thing just exploded. I'll share it with you. Maybe I'll put it on the link, but. I always say I'm going to put on a link and I never do. So, but I'll share it with you. So you've been lying? No, it's, it's more forgetful and laziness. Did you put the meat on the grill? I hope so. (laughs) But mine's still in my pants. Whoa. Hey, now I, I'm very upset that you're not wearing your inappropriate apron that I got you for Christmas. It's got a big Johnson on it. (laughs) It's got multiple Johnson and burger patties for Balls. balls. They should have been meatballs. They should have just been. Some yeah, I'll kind. have to take a picture of it. And post you know they it. should have been Rocky Mountain oysters. That'd yeah, great. That's how yeah. you cook them. Do you cook them on the grill? I don't. How do you? Yes. Just, or do you see, sous vide them? <laughs> what kind of method? What method? Uh, hello to the world. What method do you like your oyster ball or your uh, your oxen balls? Uh, Are they delicious? Sautéed. Sauté. Yes. Do you like them grilled, pan fried? <laughs> you can pan fry, boil, fry, boil. So you went from fry, OJ to Bubba. Fry. Is that what just happened? Bubba Gump. Yeah. You got oh, by gums. the way, I've got my church hoodie on today. Because it's nice and clean. <laughs> very clean. I'm it's feeling clean very hoodie. nice. Um, baby showers, yes. sir. Baby showers. Yeah. I totally, speaking of, speaking of Forrest Gump, baby showers. That's a tradition that we celebrate that other people don't. If you know a woman who's expecting her first child, chances are they're having a beautiful baby shower where their friends and family members give her gifts and well wishes for the growing family. Ugh. 
But outside of him. <laughs> Hashtag. I, I, feel, I feel like Joe Nervous. Eh, eh, eh. What are you talking about? Eh, eh, eh. A Jewish princess. But outside of America and Canada, baby showers aren't really a thing. It's actually considered bad luck to celebrate a child before they're born in many countries around the world. Wh- who, who knew? Why are we having baby showers when it's bad luck? Yeah, because, well, we <laughs> wish the worst for our children. Oh, dude. We grew up in America. America. All right, man. Um, I totally tangented that last one. Really? Yeah, I think Andy's going to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's your Is turn. Is he again. our new producer? Uh, he Look, he's definitely getting creative writing credits. Why do you keep doing that? You're talking. Why would I change the camera to me? Because I'm trying to get you to talk because I'm going to shut up. Second. Okay, do you, should yeah. I move along? Yeah. Number three, bro. United States uses single color currency. What? Gosh, shit, I bet it's like, what is it, orange and stuff? The green and black design is fairly boring, but practical compared to our cultural counterparts that have rainbow-colored bills. Some even have metallic accents. Ooh, like inlays. Fantastic. It's like foil covering. <laughs> yeah, it's like the EU and shit. And what about the fucking, how about the gamblers? Did you ever notice like Monaco, they've got those rectangle chips? Uh, just like, in the movies. Right, like you see them in like uh, is that James Bond and stuff. Those are real. I've watched poker tur- tournaments oh, really? around, the con- around the world, international poker tournaments, and those things are, are used as like chips, like bricks. And we only use poker chips. We just have different denominations. And yeah. they're all the same size, shape, weight, and everything, but they're just different denominations of colors. Right. They actually have like a brick, a chip, and it's really odd. I never understood that. But that's not we odd for them. At- no, it's probably not odd for them, but... Once again, their even their fake money is like elaborate. So our fake money also sucks like our real money. Well, you know, it's more ba- like to your point, it's basic. It's it's prudent. But so when they redid like the five and the twenty, didn't they incorporate some color into those? I, I think they did. I thought they did some. I know the hundred has a little bit has that hologrammy kind of thing in it. So, but but well, this for the was most released part, in twenty eighteen. So hmm. the money came out way before then. Yeah, maybe maybe they just retread the the, the content. It's you know, it does have a picture of the old dollar bill on it. Yeah, it does have old. But how, do we don't have a new dollar bill? We only have twenties, no, five, tens, tens and, twenties. Do we get? Yeah, we got. New I fives, haven't seen right? a fifty. So yeah, I don't even know if they make fifties. Does anybody know out there? You tell us. Uh, yeah. Along with money. Yes. Do you know what Americans do? Uh, that other Amer- that non-Americans are. No. Being very patriotic. Ain't America a fuck Versus yeah. like Germany, who is nationalistic. It's totally different. Totally different. Even when it isn't Memorial Day, the 4th of July, or Flag Day, you're likely to see American flags flying on front porches and people boldly declaring that America is the best nation on the planet. Why? It just is. <laughs> Duh. Over the top patriotism from singing the national anthem of sports, game, sports games to saying the Pledge of Allegiance in school is unusual in the developed world. We have also have a lot of uh, American flag uh, COVID masks. Really? Yeah. I've not seen one of those. Oh, they're good, bro. You know what I got for Christmas? I got an no. Iron Maiden COVID mask. No effing way. Yeah! Iron Maiden COVID mask? Yeah, it matches my Why tattoo, Why do you not bro? bring it and show it? Uh, show I, and tell. Sorry, bro. Do we we need to have show and tell? Okay. And then we had to describe because no one watches us. I watched do. the video. Did you? Yeah. So you're the one person, the yeah, one that view? Yeah, was me. And it had zero seconds and zero minutes. No, I watched the whole goddamn huh. thing. Whoa, whoa. It's God's damn. <laughs> God's and, damn it. Anyway. Yes. So what's the next tradition you next. have, Next. Super size. Mm. Oh, super side. But didn't they get rid of that because of that stupid fucking movie? Yeah, well, this is also two years old, so oh, that's true. I don't know how inaccurate it is. America has three sizes. Large, larger, largest. From supersized drinks to indulgent feasts. The United States even glorifies restaurants with the biggest food. Sundays, burgers, you name it. While other parts of the world typically value quality over quantity. How true is that? Very very are you tweeting what are you no, doing i'm what are okay. you what uh what are you are you, are you on me because yeah i'm setting the traeger grill sir <laughs> sorry you got a bluetooth we're having, we're having some rib roast on there to the world 
Uh, and yeah. I do. I mean, so I don't go to I'm fast sorry. food that I'm often, totally but I would really like to have a supersized fry. I would. What do you got to do? We, you got to order two larges? Yeah. For $3 a piece? That's bullshit. What I like, what I like the most is that Sonic kind of got around it because they didn't have, they don't have a supersized drink. They just have a Route 44. Yeah. So they, it's 44 ounces of fucking deliciousness. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's 44 ounces. It's that's, a lot. That's a lot of beverage because I remember the supersized probably was not, not bigger than 32, was it? I quarter, don't, a I don't quart? know. Which is a quarter of a gallon, which is a shit ton anyway. Yeah. But you know me, I love my soda. I got my sodas over there. Sodas? Yeah. Sodas. Any final thoughts on your... Uh... Uh, I, 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 miss, I miss the super size. And that's bullshit because I, I don't... <laughs> Fuck that guy, that documentary and all his gr- goodness he did. 30 days of amazing... Did you ever I, hear I his other documentary? The chicken one? No, the one where he did a... Mar- he was doing a marketing ad and he was trying to get marketing for the marketing ad. It was like... He was trying to fund it from the thing he was exposing. So is it was that, a hard sell. Is that like when you're paying one credit card off with another credit card? It, it kind of was. He was like real. I well, didn't, he, no, I know. I have no idea what you're talking about. He was like exposing an industry and asking that same industry for a sponsorship. Like, because to show that he could make his movie or something. Like, the well, way if he, he could pull funded. it off. Yeah. I'm then saying that would be hard sale, bro. Total kudos. Man. Hard sell. Yeah. Yeah. But he's done a lot of stuff. Super Size Me. He and, did the chicken one. There's a ch- there's the, a there, there's well, a chicken. Tell, us, tell us about it. Do you know? I haven't seen it. I just see it on Netflix when I scroll by. It's like you might like blah 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 like documentaries and shit. There's Super Size Me, which I saw years ago, right? Antibiotics and you. I think that I might be know. one of them. I have no idea. Uh, Baka Tambian, the true story <laughs> of the tambourines. Ooh, I like <laughs> Baka. All right. What else do you think Americans do that no other motherfuckers do? What are they? Well, they got a day. They got a special day that's like. Uh, America Day? Yes. No. Yes, it is. Fourth it's called Black Friday, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but they do that in Canada, too. I think they do. But I know oh, they do. Okay. A friend of mine, Whoa. a Canadian friend of mine, he's like, oh, dude, I'm going to shop online for Black Friday deals. I'm like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, online for Black Friday deals. Congratulations. It doesn't mean can- Canada does it, really, because that's online. It's like... Yeah, but he lives in Canada. Yeah? Yeah. So maybe they got special deals, too, and they're just mirroring us, bro. Worstdeal.com. So Black Friday. No one does holiday shopping like the U.S. On the day after Thanksgiving, millions of people flood stores across the country trying to get the best bargains for Christmas gifts on Black Friday. You know what they call Black Friday? Do we ever go into that? You know why it's called Black Friday? Yes. Okay. Why don't you tell us anyway? Why don't you tell us? Man? I believe it's because that's when most businesses start making a profit. Yes. So it's they're no longer in the red; they're in the black. They get out of Is the red correct? and get in the black. Yes. Other cutters, other countries do criticize this American tradition because it over commercializes a religious holiday. Oh yeah, like they give a shit. What do you What do you think about that sentence? Um, I think Italians are the only ones who give a fuck because they're the only ones who are fucking Catholic anymore. That's not true. I know. French, but, Spanish, meh. all of South America, Mexico. Mm. Yeah. That's okay. that's a billion people, dude. Yeah, but I think they're just jealous that they didn't get a TV screen a half off. <laughs> in that Sao Paulo. In, yeah, in Sao Paulo. With uh, Jesus Christ looking over. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar looking down upon them. Not touchdown Jesus. Different. Not touchdown Jesus. What's this one? Cristo de Jimenico de la Huerta? <sighs> I know that one. I don't. Damn it. Damn it. I know. Pris- it's oh, blah, blah, blah. Don't do it. Don't do it. You should uh, talk some more while I look it up. Should I move along? Yes. Customized restaurant orders. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. Customize. Cu- custom Christ the Redeemer. There you go. That's him. That's the, that's the, uh, blah, blah. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one in, that's in Rio. Yeah. That's the one on top of the mountain. Or what are the hill? Yeah, that the big hill that overlooks Rio de Janeiro. I, did, I thought it actually had a name like Redemoreo de Cristo or something, which obviously probably well, that sounds really good though. I think you should, you know. Yeah, I bet you it's in Portuguese if it is anything. Well, da Portuguese. I like bolognese. All that shit. Prima donna, you know. Oh, sure. I, I don't know. Post Madonna. Yeah, all Prima- of the Madonnas. <laughs> all, every the current, past, Holiday. present. Holiday. And post Madonna. Celebrate. All you are material. A material. A material. Girl. Girl. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that how it ends? Or I believe so. Somebody. Oh. 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 
Cause we are living in a material world. And I am a material can you, girl. Can I oh, make requests or, on this or, or radio guy. station or what? Or guy. Caller, are you there? I think uh, we're going hi. back to you. I'd like to hear um, Islands in the Stream. Can you play that for me, please? No. Oh. Over commercializing. Uh, yeah, I totally get that, but like, it's also not what it was because with the online stuff, what are we talking they've about? got Cyber Monday. Oh, we're going Black back Friday. To, we're going back to Black Friday. Okay. Sorry. I'm just fucking around. But you already went to the next one, didn't you? Do we already go to the next one? I just haven't yeah. indulged still, about it. Are we still hung up on Black Friday? Sorry. I don't know. Are we done with Brown I, Friday? I, it sounds good to me. Customized restaurant orders. That's what it was. Yes. I can't. They don't do that. Tell me about this. In some foreign cultures that take pride in their cu- cuisine, it's considered uncouth to request condiments to adjust your meal to taste. Requesting a bottle of ketchup or salt that isn't already in the table will get you some major side eye from your server. Do pub flits have uh, ketchup on the table? Who? Pub flits. I don't know who that. Who's pub flits? Pub flits. Pub flits. Pom flits. Pom flits. Pom flits. flits. P o m m e <laughs> means potato. Oh. Pom flits. Oh yes. Pom uh, flits. Yeah, I got nothing. If you're worried about committing a faux pas while eating out, it's not a bad idea to brush up on your foreign dining etiquette before traveling abroad. Probably a good idea because you could like offend someone. Yeah. Did you ever go to a pompous place? One of those Brazilian steak joints? One time. The red green stopper thing? Where you flip it? Uh, no. I, I, the, so there's a, there's a little, it looks like a little timer on your, yeah. on your table. Green it's means a, to bring it. it red means it's no. It's a stoplight. Yeah, it's literally a stoplight and you flip it and if you leave it on green... They keep bringing. They keep meat. fucking just shoving that shit off those <laughs> those spits, and like in Germany, my grandmother on my dad's side, if you you always ate with knife and fork, so you had both utensils in your hand all times. Salad, any about corn on the cob. Corn, well, that's that's a hand food, so no, because you're not have you don't have a utensil in one hand. You don't cut your meat up and then put your knife down and then eat. You don't do that ever. You don't just do that knife and fork in your hand. So anyway, when you're done. If you're finished, you should put them next to each other and lay them across your plate. It yeah. means closed. Yeah. But I put them down like this because I had no idea. And next thing, my grandmother comes in and goes, whoop, and just like gives me a thwop of something. I fr- was it was it- delicious. Don't get me wrong. I just didn't know. And I was like stuffed. And it's like, yeah, because I had it open. Yeah. Nobody it, taught you yeah, that. Yeah, had a V. Yeah, that was because yes. back home, we didn't do it that way. Yeah, my dad taught me that that's how you say that you're that you're finished with your supper. Right. So okay. It was very interesting. So that was open. Open thing. So customize. What are your thoughts about that? Are you offended by that? Have you ever experienced this at a restaurant? Because you've no. been abroad. You uh, met. A, I like broads. You've seen abroad. Hey now. Uh, I've never experienced that. But I'm. You know, as I've said before, when in Rome, man. You know, I don't. We just talked about Rome. <laughs> like, bring me the syrup with that uh, Monte, Cristo. Monte Cristo sandwich in New York City. Oh, is, you know, I'm whatever. I, I want to try all the local traditions. Love it. Whether it's food or drink or, hey, this is what they do. But here. I don't like Although lack that. of condiments. Fuck that. If I want ketchup for my fries, dip them in. I'm sorry. But, you know, a lot of places they do. Mayonnaise. Ma- thank you. Mm-hmm. Stole my they thunder, do. bro. Don't be precogging me, bro. Salsa. What if you order salsa? Salsa. And I, I wanted salsa. No, I wanted a salsa. We keep doing that with Seinfeld, the sons of bitches. You, you know do. What, I, you know I what don't. other these ummies do? You know what else these ummies do that these that the rest of the world doesn't really do? What? Drink ice cold beverages. Go to any restaurant in America, ask for a glass of water or soda. It will come with a massive amount of ice in the cup. But if you go abroad, beverages are kept at room temperature and delivered that way. But Americans, we like our glasses filled to the brim with ice. Watch Jeopardy today, one of the reruns. This, yeah. This guy's crushing it right now. He's got like, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to. A gazillion dollars? I'm not giving him credit, but whatever. He's doing very well. Anyway, one of the uh, questions, what temperature is room temperature? Do you know? Uh, I don't. I'm going to guess. Uh, what temperature is room temperature? 68. That's really close. 72. Oh, I was off by four, son of a bitch. But that's bitch. pretty good. I'll give you a, I would give you a plus minus you two get, for sure. Okay, so I still got If you it. said 70, I would you would have nailed it. But I got it wrong either way. No, but 68 is close, though. I mean, I wouldn't even... I wouldn't know what room temperature was. Like, Well... I would probably guess 68 I knew also. 80 was too warm. Yeah, 80 is right. definitely too warm. 60 is too cold. Right. 70... 
not sure. Could go either way. Somewhere between 60 and 72, 74, something like that would make sense to me. But anyway, so 72 degrees allegedly, allegedly is a room temperature. Not allegedly, it is, because that's what they, that's, you ha- you know that it is. They deem it. So go, sir. It's uh, your your turn. What's, what else, what, a, what, a, what else don't Americans Next. do? Next. Asking for doggy bags, bro. That's not true. It is. Oh, we asked for doggy bags. Yeah, asking for a doggy bag at the end of a meal is just as gauche or something, as asking... Gauche. Gauche. I, I'm, I'm not good at... Is it G-O-S-H? G-A-U-C-H-E. Gauche. Gauche. Yes, that is gauche. As asking for ketchup. It might seem terrible to let food go to waste, but many European eateries turn their nose up at the idea of taking food to go. That's ridiculous. In their view, it's a health hazard that could potentially lead to food poisoning. Despite the local attitude, France attempted to cut down on food waste by making it illegal... For f- restaurants to deny doggy bags if they're requested. Wait, you're telling me that somebody's actually asked for a doggy bag and been denied a doggy bag? I guess. That, that's fucking crazy. Well, now there's a law. France made right. it illegal I'm for saying restaurants illegal to, to deny, deny them. It. So I'm saying they must have been able to deny it at some point. Yeah. Like, sorry, we don't have anything to... We don't have... We literally don't have a bag or a Tupperware or a styrofoam thingy uh, to give to uh, you. Okay. So uh, Megzi and I went to eat eatery after eatery in Vegas because that's what we do. We do restaurants, right? We like restaurants. We went to two four dollar places. The four dollar sign joints. Oh, I thought you meant it was four dollars. Yeah, I wish. No, they, you mean they were nice places. Yes, okay. very nice places. Both took to go. Both had to go. Which I will. Uh, that leads to another point on the list that I will save my point because I already looked at the list. Okay. So, are so you, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Bro. Excellent. Um, yeah. But we had we had leftovers for pretty much everything, like all of our meals, and they were like little snacks in between the other stuff. Like snacks. It was, it saved us money. Cash money? Yeah. And if we got sick, I throw up a little bit. I mean, you, you could, I could lose a little weight. I I throw, little... I'm sorry. Did you say throw up a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> what you say? What? What? <laughs> you you just throw up a little bit. Just <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. But is that like a blah. scarf and barf? Yes, but I'm not bulimic. <laughs> that sounds crazy. That's gross, dude. What you know? You know what else? What? What else? What Americans do without with food? What? They eat dinner right after work. What? How rude! <laughs> <laughs> There's an American tradition. What shows that from? Full House. Is it? Oh, yeah, the little girl. Yeah, How yeah, yeah. rude. Stephanie. Yeah, DJ, right. DJ, DJ, DJ. It was the oh, little tiny one. It was yeah, the little Steph- munchkin that did that. I think Stephanie did it first, though. She was how rude. Because she was old enough to be cute, but not like old. Cut it out. Oh, God. No, That's fucking horrible, isn't it? You have lost a rung on the friendship ladder. Is that is that, that one demerit? That is... Oh, it's, it's definitely a friendship demerit. Okay. <laughs> definitely. You made, a, you made a Dave Couillet reference. No, thank you. Um, eating dinner right after work. There's American tradition of making quick and easy meals after work to get dinner on the table as quickly as possible. But in many countries in Europe and around the world, dinner doesn't even start until 8 or 9 p.m. Americans love an early dinner because we rush through, well, every meal. And that's if we remember to eat breakfast or lunch at all. And that's true. It kind of comes to that pace thing we talked about. Yeah. we Americans are not... I don't think we spend enough time enjoying like, hey, we're wham, bam. Thank you, mammers. We don't we're not menage a trois. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we're like, it's in, it's out, it's over. It's like oh, a tennis match. I, 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 what are we talking about? Ten. What? 15 love. Our whole life. I don't. I Our don't, life is, I, is a wham, I'm very bam, disturbed thank you. that we went from eating too fast to a sexual reference. Well, no, it's a our whole culture is a wham, bam. Thank you, man. Microwave generation. You know, we're all good like that, right? Yeah. Isn't that what we do? You're correct. I, I, I. <laughs> what am I missing? What time do you guys usually eat dinner? Uh, like whatever. right when you get home from work? No, I usually I'm kind of all over the place though. But I can I'll forget to eat, and it's two o'clock, and I don't know. I'm such a disgusting fat body when I don't eat You're half not my meals. Fat body. But um, yeah, I I tend to eat. Uh, I do it earlier now. 
because like I just don't want to lay down with a stu- like stomach and get girty and bleh. girty. But yeah, you know, girty. Bleh. Gastro <laughs> oh, under like acid reflux. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Re- okay. Re- refluxy. <laughs> I got the GERD. <laughs> All right. What's your next tradition uh, next and or custom? is in the United States custom of giving the thumbs up. What? Yep. There's even an emoji for it. But after the affirming gesture of giving a thumbs up, it's not universal. It's actually akin to raising your middle finger in places like Australia, Greece, and the Middle East. Oh, shit. It's probably best to just use your words. Especially in business transactions. Germany. Germany. This this looks like uh, this looks like okay in the black, right? No. This looks like okay. Yeah. Right. Everything's okay. Right. This means asshole in German. Okay. Arschloch. So you're basically the puckered rim. This is you being the puckered rim. Uh, so whenever they go like this to you, you're, you're not like you're an asshole. Okay, America. Thanks. America, no, greatest. Yeah, you're an asshole. <laughs> Arschloch. Okay. Well, you know, German. That also means that's also the scuba diving thing for everything's okay. That's correct. And you can't do thumbs up because that means go up. up. That That means to ascend. Yes. That's why they don't do thumbs up in the Patty scuba dive world or any scuba dive world. Patty, Patty's like the licensing P A D I. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, P T D. Yes. D I. Yeah, I knew that. Diver or something. Blah blah blah. Diver down. Diver down. All right. What's the next next tradition we just did? Thumbs up. Yeah, you're up, bro. Thumbs up. Teddy Brosif. All right. Do you know what else Americans do that other people, no. other countries don't? I have no idea. Eat pumpkin. Oh, God. Pumpkin's Jesus. an all-American crop, and it fills ta- fall tables here in a way that few other countries truly understand. No Thanksgiving table is complete without pumpkin pie. Grocery store shelves are stocked to the brim with pumpkin spice products. Even drinks, coffee, right, with their lattes and spice, blah, blah, blahs. And candles, motherfucker. Candles and goddamn incense. Incense and goddamn candles. This started so fun, and now it's a rant. And we even serve this particular squash in savory ways. To say Americans are nuts about pumpkin is a bit of an understatement. So the candle... Oh yeah. Does it smell like pumpkin pie? Yeah, something like. But it smells like burnt pumpkin, which smells like. Is burnt it smell shit. like burnt pumpkin, or does it smell like pumpkin pie? It doesn't smell like a pumpkin, but it's supposed to be a pumpkin smell, or is a pumpkin that spice? You know, the spice that they associate with pumpkin, that pumpkin like all spicy, clovey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all that too, and it's. Oh, so it's more than it, pumpkin. Yeah, it's not. I don't think there's a. Is pure the pumpkin candle smell. literally called more than pumpkin? I think it's pumpkin spice or some <laughs> bullshit. Pumpkin, pumpkin in your junk. Pumpkin in the trunk. <laughs> Trunk. I got pumpkin in the trunkin. <laughs> You're you a right? fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, but like that was off the top oh of my, my head, man. God. Give me like for give me a half a point for improv points. Okay. It's a horrible, so, funny, but it's kind of funny. I got pumpkin in the trunkin is a great. It's candle. funny. Yes, it would be good. Um, it would be a good uh, nail color. Pumpkin in the trunkin too. Like if it's really orange. Yeah. Sorry. Anyway, you yeah. What are your shit. thoughts on that? Yeah. When, how do you think? When did the pumpkin spice craze begin? Ten years ago? Twelve years ago? I don't know. Whatever. Right? How did that start? Did was did Starbucks go? Okay. Okay, you guys. Were they in like the creative room? And they go, hey, we need a new drink for the fall, or some shit. How did that happen? Okay, we're gonna add pumpkin to coffee. <laughs> Right. And people are going to lose their fucking minds. If you notice, though. No, I don't It's notice. my opinion that none of the pumpkin is actually added. The flavor of pumpkin's not, because pumpkin's flavor, it's the allspice. Pumpkin is basic like a mash. If you've ever eaten pumpkin on its own. It's bland. It's extremely, bleh, like, flavorless. It's, bland. it's just a it's medium like to carry. Board. Right. So you mush it up in that paste. You make it that pasty stuff. Yeah. Like, almost like a gelatin. Yeah. Almost. Like, yeah. Or, a, or a custard, almost. And you mix it in with the allspice and the cloves. It's a clove and the allspice are actually done it. So, yes, it was a fall thing that people are like, we probably don't get enough of this, bro. And then someone, like, you put nutmeg on in, in the shit anyway. That's always on the side. You know, at a Starbucks, for example. You've got nutmeg and cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like that. I guess I just would have, it would be interesting to be a fly on the wall in that in the creative room on there when some guy was like, yeah, let's do pumpkin. I think they followed suit. But it was it wasn't well, like an original it? idea, you know right? I mean? like, right. Well, I'm I'm think the pumpkin consortium. Yes. 
The, the committee of all pumpkinness. <laughs> yeah, you know the pumpkin. What's yes. the pumpkin mafia? Is oh, what we'll call the PM. Dude, they're the worst, bro. Hey, they're bad. Bro. I'm gonna I'm gonna apply to be a pumpkin bouncer. The the pumpkin mafia comes in right, and they're like, hey, you're gonna eat this fucking pumpkin cake, pumpkin, or we're gonna fucking pound your face in like pound cake. <laughs> you're gonna eat it to pumpkin pie, or we're gonna treat your face like pound cake. How about that, Junior? You want to hear a funny tweet I read yesterday? I would love to hear a funny tweet you read yesterday. I got breast implants in my knees, so it's more comfortable when I pray. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's so dumb, but oh yeah, yeah. It, would, it would be more comfortable, wouldn't it? It would be. It's like gel. Dr. Scholl should get in on that. He should. He should get on pew, pew supports. Like uh, knee pads. Pew supports. Well, he takes the pew out of the Dr. Scholl feet because he's got odor eaters. Yeah, I get and you. And he puts it into the pew for the stands. I understand. From pew to pew. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew to no pew. pew. No pew to pew. Pew, 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 pew. Sure. Americans. Sons of... You know how greedy we are? Very. We're uh, fucking greedy bitches. You know why? Immensely. You know? Do you want to know why? Uh, Here's I, just one reason. I think, don't think know why. One. Tell me. Free... Fucking refills. Get the fuck out of here. You know that ice cold soda you purchased at a fast food chain with all the ice? Eatery? With all the filled to the rim. The rim, rim bro. with ice. Well, get ready to drink tons of it because in the US of A, we have free refills, baby. Give me a refill. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Keep them coming, baby. I want a stomach ache. The tradition of ongoing of, of gorging on soft drinks, coffees, and teas without extra charge is very American. Because I've seen that shit. They charge for everything in other countries, like every sip of a drink. But you got to think about it. It's incredibly inexpensive to mix syrup with soda with carbonated water. Yeah. Do you want to know the? It's, it's pennies. Do you want to know the most expensive part of that? The ice tubes. The ice. Yeah, there you go. To make yeah. the ice because it's right. so much energy yeah. to freeze water and freeze. to keep it frozen, whatever. It's basically, well, if you think about it, like that's actually where like 90% of the cost of a soda is. It's not in that. Or the that, cup. Right, that little, right. The cup's about five cents or whatnot. So delivering the cup. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. But I mean, whenever I, it, you know, when we used to go into work, into a building, I whenever I would go out to lunch, I'd always get. I'd always refill my cup before I went back to work. Oh, yeah. So I had another soda at my desk, always. you know, for the afternoon. Yeah, so, I always did that. And I I took advantage of free refills. Hello. Excuse me, are these free refills? <laughs> free refills. Free I'm refills. Here, I'm, I'm here for free refills. Yes, you are. And streamlined staples. Your time. Your turn. No, right. I was going to say like drugs. Like drugs. My drugs. Are free, for drugs. Free, free refills. Are you in here for free refills? Yeah, I am. I am. Just like Jennifer Grey. Uh, with her amazing Fiero. Next, Americans pay sales tax. Get the fuck out. For reals, foreigners who come to the U.S. for a little retail therapy are usually warned that prices are not what they seem. In other countries, the taxes are reflected in the prices of the item. The idea of sales like tax, tax. Who? Value added tax. C, Jace. The idea of sales tax that gets applied upon checkout is not the norm. So way to go, America. Doing weird shit again. Delaware does VAT tax. Who? Delaware. Value added? Yeah. So they don't have sales tax. You just pay whatever the number is on the thing, but it's already included in the price. So it's- Just like that. It's it's hidden. It's not that it's not there. No, it's-, it's hidden. Yeah, of course. And right. the, the truth is- What's the truth? We are not fucking responsible for paying sales tax as a fucking American consumer. It's the company selling to us that's actually responsible, and they always- fucking pawn that shit off on us we we i mean we, we can use our dollar we can vote with our dollar and say i will not pay sales tax and if you don't want to do that that's fine we won't have this transaction but sales tax is a responsibility of the uh, yeah of the, the merchant the merchant not yeah. ours but they pass that shit down yeah. once again on us well, how Systems, are you bro how <laughs> how are you going to stop that i just tell them no i don't want to pay sales tax and if they don't want to take I'll go, I'll go somewhere else that has it cheaper so it's cool it's, well, you can do it. People sometimes, a lot of times, given like you know how they talk about the furniture companies are like, we will pay oh, your sales tax. Yeah, they're fucking responsible for it anyway. It's a bullshit ploy to get you. Well, you know what they're I mean? just passing the cost right. along to the to the to customer. The consumer, I get yeah, that, correct. But how do you get away with not paying it? You got to go somewhere else. You well, you would have to put your foot down with that purveyor or, or the wholesale retailer or whatever, and say, I, I I will buy this from your store, but I refuse to pay sales tax on it. 
And that's up to them then. If yeah. they don't want to do right. it, then and they, they don't have, have to, to eat it if they don't. Right, they have to eat it then. It they goes will... into their profit margin. Correct. And in some cases, they might not do it. Like electronics, for example, has only had like 5% margin. Yeah. Well, you're paying up to 10%. Like surprise, it's like 10.1% total yeah. tax. Yeah. Total sales with tax. County, so, with county, city, and state. state. Correct. Yeah. It's crazy. Which makes it, that's something I thought about is every city's different, right? By up to a percent. Arizona is. Pennsylvania is completely state. different than that. Okay. Well, complete. It's a six percent. So that there is that. So Arizona is like a six percent, and then it's whatever extra for the yeah town county and city. Philadelphia is the only thing higher. It's seven percent. So it's six percent everywhere except for the city limits of Philadelphia. It's seven percent, but it's flat for everything except for the things that aren't taxed, like all clothes, all water, all be like beverages. But then they had the soda tax. Yeah. Which we don't have yet. But that any sugary drink over thirty two right. ounces or twenty yeah, ounces, whatever. it was like eight percent. It's like Jeez. or no, it's it's a per ounce is like ten percent per ounce. It's some fucking ridiculous number per ounce. It was some weird thing. I have to look it up, but it's a weirdly odd odd thing. How do we get on taxes? My point is yeah. that if you're buying a large priced item like a car it would make sense to leave the city limits of Philadelphia to save 1%. That is correct. Because 1% on 30000 dollars is a lot more than a freaking diet Pepsi at the local convenience store. Yeah, because like Buckeye or something, there's like some car dealership in Buckeye or Wickenburg where the taxes are yeah. their sales tax is like nothing. So you're only paying like six, seven percent yeah. versus eight to ten percent. Which if you're buying something that's like, you know, yeah, tens of thousands of dollars for sure. Right. Like you know, that's yeah. gonna really save you a ton of money in the long run. What do you feel about uh, a value added tax? Tax type thing like what what are your thoughts it's we're gonna get it, the customer's gonna get it in the ass no matter what dude right. whether we take it whether it's on the price tag or whether it's added up at the register or however you want to say it we're still gonna pay it in if you want if you want that item the customer still is gonna pay it in today's world would it make sense to round up or down to the nearest dollar yes. for everything or at least quarter or something. I don't know. But I'm wondering now, because it's all going digital, you don't need to carry change. So maybe it's even more important that you do have pennies and nickels and dimes. Well, if you think do about you know it. What I'm saying? Yeah. But remember how we talked about a while ago, a few months ago, how the beer companies changed the size of the can to like yeah. 10 half ounces? An ounce, yeah, half an ounce. Or, or yeah, an it was 11 less, point was 11 something. Two, and think, therefore, yeah. every 30 pack, they made an, an two extra... Beers. Yep. whatever two beers for every 30 pack. right so but and and they're selling you know millions and millions and millions of beer of cans of beer right so it's the same thing like if if somebody charges 11.59 for a 12 pack of diet pepsi versus 11.72 okay that's not a lot right then for the customer right but for pepsi they sell billions of dollars so that's gonna that could Make or break their stock price, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. You know, yeah. all that they, bullshit. Well, they make it up in volume, right? Basically in that way. So, well, I'm just wondering if like a value added tax, having that price in there without having to figure it out, right? The thing is though- Yeah, that's a good point. The thing is though, it'll just be, it'll still be a higher price in surprise than it would be say in Tempe, right? Because it's an included price without tax, it would still be higher because surprises taxes are higher. It only, value added tax only works if it's a flat for every, like- Everyone, right? I no. I mean, if let's okay, let's say let's, Phoenix and Tempe, right? One has nine percent sales tax, one has ten. Well, then you just put the price of the item on the price tag. That's what I'm saying. So out it's just a higher price, correct? Out the door. But what I'm saying correct. is like, what's great about uniformity for us is like, think about where we live. Each city is so different, and we're we have how many little hundred thousand population towns uh, in like this area 12 gilbert chandler yeah. mesa yeah phoenix yeah um surprise, surprise. paradise valley glendale Scottsdale, peoria Awatuki. yes yeah. so, i mean blah, blah. you got all yeah, those levine yeah yeah, yeah. and awatuki is technically part of phoenix but oh, yeah it is true. its own th that's true but it is its own thing right so like what how do you why not have just a straight price yeah for I, the whole I, area, I, right? I agree with that so i'm wondering which one like i would be okay if it was like that if it was a flat if it was the same price in tempe as it was in surprise totally okay or you know sun city yeah or something. i'm totally cool with that as a vat but other than that like i'll just take my chances because i know where the lower sales tax is i guess it doesn't really change anything for me making an included higher price i guess i'm not going to worry about it unless i'm 
buying something that's significant. That's if I'm just buying groceries or I'm going to Sam's Club, I'm, I, you know, like, oh, hey, I need to go to this Sam's Club because it's a half percent cheaper. Like, I'm buying dog food. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm you're buying two hundred dollars going out the door. Well, I'm going to save pennies on right. dog food. So it's to me, it's yeah, I'm it paying depends. for convenience to go to the one that's closest to me. Yeah, it's totally. You know? I totally get that, and it's not like we live in surprise because that's like crazy. And Tempe's pretty good. I think Tempe's like eight point one or eight point three. Nine. Yeah, I think they went up to nine. Look that up. Oh sure. my god! But um, look it but up. no, but surprise is like ten point one. Addicted to the internet, you guys. It's it's because of this beer Google thing, bro. Me, me, me. Okay, so off the VAT tax. So we don't have that really. Some states do, but we don't. Is that like a VAT tax? Yeah, value added. Oh, not VAT. Yeah, VAT. I thought we were gonna it's go to the VAT v- cave. V- 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 VAT. You know what else? Like you know a what, vat of French fries? You know what else Americans do? What? They do it on Hanukkah, which has an H in it. <laughs> Just like chlamydia. <laughs> um, giving you. gifts. They give gifts on Hanukkah, bro. Okay. All eight crazy nights. The over-commercialization of Christmas hasn't just affected Christmas in America. It has found its way into Hanukkah celebrations. In reality, Hanukkah is a pretty minor Jewish holiday. Really? Yeah, I think, I would bet, I would guess the Passover is the biggest one. Oh, or okay. no, Rosh Hashanah is uh, Yom Kippur uh, is the new year. I think in September, usually, Yom Kippur. I think that's sure. the big one. Uh, but, but its proximity to Christmas has led to American Jews giving eight days of presents to each other, in addition to lighting the menorah and frying latke, latkes. So American Jews are the only ones that give gifts? Uh, the rest I of guess, the world doesn't? I guess. That's really crazy. Isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah. I would say it's crazy. 8.1% in Tempe, by the way. I was totally wrong. I'm so You're sorry. Damn right. I fucking live right there, bro. I'm Tempe adjacent. It's me too. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm just Jason on the other side, bro. Yeah, well, so um, a crazy night. Oh, go please. I'm done. I'm done. With oh, you done with your? But Hanukkah, yeah, Hanukkah. They give gifts. I I would have thought they give gifts. I mean, you know, we should. Are we gonna do a holiday thing with like pagan versus not pagan? Which ones? What are pagan ones and which ones are from religions? Sure, put it on the list, bro. Is are you exhausted just thinking about putting it on the list? I am. Is that just like, oh, dude, uh, mentally, I can't, I can't type one sentence, dude. Bro, you're the Wozniak. I'm, I'm not Jobs, but I'm, jo- I'm. Are you Jobs to Jason? I'm less Wozniak. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm. I'm not more Jobs. Oh my god. I'm not hand Jobs, mouth Jobs, Whoa. or foot Jobs. I'm, I'm just less Wozniak than you. You're Steve Jobs adjacent. Uh, that would be a fun one, actually. Okay. Don't you think? Sure. I wonder what the pagan one for winter was like. Trying to, hey, we just gotta get through this shit, bro. We just gotta get through. It's cold. We gotta get through this shit. Shit, grow. Bring grow the already. tree in. Cut down that tree. Grow. Bring it in. Put lights on it. Hurry up. Yeah, let's catch it on fire. Oh, it's lighting. Ooh, those lights are pretty. <laughs> fire! <laughs> there goes our Adobe. Fire! <laughs> the cave is on fire. Oh man. All right. What else next? What's next for you? Next us? on the American Besides list, that is a World Series. What? Every October, our baseball teams compete in the World Series Championship. We call it the World Series, but we're the only country that participates aside from a single Canadian team, the Mighty Blue Jays of Toronto. The used, fact to, used to also be the Montreal team, Expos, who are now, now the Washington Nationals. Yes, sir. The Washington Baseball Club. The fact that we call our team the best in the world in a competition that doesn't operate internationally is baffling to foreigners. So why call it that? According to NPR, it may have started just as a marketing ploy. Of course it did. It was Duh. the supersized guy. He marketed the marketing. Look, this Look, is bro. great about this thing, man. What? Uh, did they have, Did they play World Baseball Bullshit League? Some bullshit like where you played yeah, different World countries? World Baseball Classic. Yeah, how'd yeah. that happen? How'd that turn out? Who won it that? It was good. Dominican won, right? Puerto Probably. Rico oh, sure. or Dominican? Yeah, one, one of those two. two. Yeah, correct. Because it's no longer American sports. No, it's completely <laughs> dominated by Latin America. Mm-hmm. Venezuela. It's yeah. It's very interesting to see. Tell me more. That's it. Go baseball. I do love the baseball. <laughs> Oh my God, honey, baby, he lost a lung. Why I go think, Dodgers. What I think I told you to go on my oh throat. Oh my goodness. Oh boy, my throat. Um, anything to add to your World Series? I'm glad you got that one because 
I agree. It's a piece of shit, but fucking award. Go baseball. A, yeah, it should be called fucking sport. It should be called the baseball fuck championship because it's fuck you. It's oh. not. Uh, okay. It, yeah. I love you, man. I know, I, but I agree. That's it's dumb because there's only one point one countries. Involved in it, so it should not be called the World Series. Uh, it's called. It should be called the Baseball <laughs> Championship or some shit. Technically, it's called two countries involved in it. Well, but there's one it's, more. It's such a small part. <laughs> At one in one twenty ninth. Yes, it's, it's such a small part of Canada. One in one thirtieth. That. Yeah, you know I, what I'm saying. I know what you mean. But I mean, they don't get to play Japan. It's pretty crazy. Japan has some pretty good baseball. Huge a lot. Korea, dude. Huge, they yeah. come over uh, a lot of get paid million. sight unseen or whatever you know whatever yeah. for whatever they pitch. yeah the yankees like put up 50 million just to be able to sign some guy. just even look at a guy yeah which I, I i don't that kind of makes me sad that there's that kind of money going around and people like eating out of trash cans kind of really is weird and i i love sports don't get me wrong it's just looking back at it from that perspective yeah cool. it's become excessive sad um bro yes would you go to prom with me? Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. We would go together? Yeah. Do oh I have God, to wear the dress so or are you wearing the dress? I'm wearing the fucking are we, dress. Are dude. we going to wear matching tuxedo I, t-shirts? I would like to say that I pitch, but if I'm wearing the dress, you know, for you? You can wear the dress. And, I'll, play, and, I'll play Johnny uh, Bench. And you can lead when we dance. How about that? Oh, I'll, okay. I'll wear the dress and lead. I okay. like it. But um, did you go to your prom? No. Either of them? Any of them? None. I went to a junior. Oh, yeah? And it was such a bad experience. Yes. That I did not go to senior. And I felt awful because, like, I had made plans to hang out and nerd out with friends. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know if you knew this, but I wasn't the mo- like, you know. Stop it. I wasn't the most popular guy in the school. I like your retainer. I got braces. <laughs> I just got them tightened. Oh, boy, they hurt. I can't bite on anything. <laughs> Okay, okay stop misophonia it. Yeah. Uh, episode. Um, but uh, I was asked to senior prom by a woman, and I sa- I politely said no, but I felt really bad about it, but I'd already made plans, and I didn't want to, like, cheat yeah. out on my friends because I had already made plans yeah. with friends. So I felt awful about it, and I know it was how hard that must have been for her to ask. Yeah. I'm not going to say the person's name, but I felt really – I it was unfortunate. Is she doing okay now? I hope so. I've actually – I've I've looked – her name up on like Facebook, but we're old. Like we're, we're, you and I are like mid forties, bro. I, 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 so, I know this. So considering aware she was, of how we're old in the we same are. class, uh, you know, it's not like as much di- social media is not as much of a thing. So I think people are harder to find actually than some younger people who have more of a f- digital. Footprint. I understand. Okay. Now I got you. Yeah. So anyway, no, but I felt really bad, but, uh, I should have, maybe I should have, could have, would have gone. Um, it would have been a great time. It, would, it was a good person. It wasn't about the person or anything. It's just I had already made plans. Yeah, you were previously engaged. Previously engaged. But uh, yeah, no teenager's life is complete without getting all dressed up in a tuxedo or ball gown and going to prom. While other countries have formal dances and balls, they, they have balls. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get it. I was like, what's he laughing at? I'm dumb. <laughs> they have formal dances and, and balls. <laughs> You've got big balls. <laughs> hey, sir, I've got big balls. Um, they lack They've the very got pre- the biggest balls of them all. ACDC. It's called Big Balls. It's the name of the song. Balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's um, terrible. They lack the very particular pomp of prom and the iconic prom king and queen. What is so they have, they have balls. What is the word origin of the word prom, sir? Promenade, probably. Oh, nice. I, uh, I'm gonna I guess isn't that where you show somebody around, right? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about Promenade. that. Promenade, bro. I'm a genius. Well, let's not get carried away with that shit. That's also not even true because I'm not. Uh, Rot. I'm not a genius. Rot. I, I've proven many times on this show that I talk out of my ass, and then I have to make corrections three three episodes later. Three <laughs> out of my, out of this. Out of your butthole. Okay, the origin of the word prom is older than the tradition itself. It's a shortened version of... Promenade. Promenade, the French word for a walk or stroll, which dates back to the 16th century. That should have been one of our etymologies, bro. But guess what? We don't need an etymology beer Googles when you got you and me in here, because we, we think about stuff outside of the box. My high school had morp. 
which was prom backwards. No, nice. and that was for the freshmen and this for the sophomores. And you wore sweatpants. Oh, you very sweat, cool. You know, like casual, pajamas and shit. Yeah, it was super casual, like sweatpants and t- jeans. You know. Well, no, it was Wasn't it was all jeans? it was like you had to wear sweats. Oh, dressed down. Yeah, it was Seriously. the opposite. So the the juniors and seniors wore tuxedos. Right. The freshmen and sophomores went to their own dance, and it was sweatpants. Like, and, well, do know. they? I'd I'd have to pull out my church sweats. Yes, I've, I've shown you my church your sweats. Your formal sweats. Yes, my I, I've pulled out my church sweats. I've got my church hoodie on it. We talked about that earlier today. Boom. What a callback. Church bro. hoodie. You know what else we do that no other motherfuckers do? What's that? It's Groundhog Day. <laughs> it's cold outside. Dun, 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 dun. It's Groundhog oh, Better get, get out your booties on. Put your booties on. Brr, it's going to be cold, cold, cold. Ned? Ned Ryerson, Bing. I sound just like that guy. I think Ned. I've missed you so much. <laughs> what do you? Uh, what do you? Whatever you're doing later, can you get out of it? <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so every February second, Americans watch with bated breath. No, we don't. Go ahead. To see if a certain groundhog in Pennsylvania that would be Punks Tony Phil. Punks Tony Phil. We'll see his shadow or not. If, uh, once again, Pahill. Where's the pterodactyl? Behind you. Pa Philip? Pa Thomas? Pa Thomas. Pa Thomas. Pa Timothy. Pa Timothy the pterodactyl. Remember? Pa Timothy. Oh, God. Hello, Pa Timothy. How are you doing? The, these are ah. the inside jokes, but I'm hoping people are listening to the last two episodes. Of it. It's a fucking beanie baby, dude. It's, it's a beanie baby pterodactyl. Yeah. Goes, um, <clears throat> yeah. So, anyway, they see if Punxsutawney Phil will see his shadow or not. If he sees his shadow, six more weeks of a long, frigid winter, which is horseshit. You and I know that because a uh, thing called science. And then science! If, he's, if he's shadow less, spring will come sooner rather than later. But this celebration to break up the coldest months of the year is unheard of outside the U.S. and Canada. Huh, Canada also. Those, you know what? They don't have, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to diss Canada. I like Canada a lot. Yeah, we do. But I feel like they kind of, they kind of, piggyback off everybody else yeah they do they got french canadian section so they're piggybacking off the french they got monarchy on their goddamn currency so they're piggybacking off of that shit the english and they're piggybacking off of our goddamn customs i've had it canada did you guys hear that he just broke up with canada <laughs> <laughs> all right i i think i've had a couple of fun rants today they're not actually real angry rants right i hope everyone knows that i'm just fucking around right uh i hope so because i love canada i think canada is so cool oh canada right. what's uh what's your next uh, next tradition? the united states simply refers to ourselves as america what i know sometimes we seems like we forget that the united states is not the only america in the world it's actually considered politically incorrect in South America to call the U.S. just America. In fact, there's a whole website dedicated to explaining the common mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it don'tblameamerica.com? Or how, I, it does not state, sir. But I mean, obviously, for a long time, that North America, South America was called the Americas, right? Right. So now the united states of america has stolen the word right yes and now it's just murka with yeah, the U, murka. which is right. wrong it's well it's apostrophe m u r k a murka i thought it was c i didn't think there was a k in it yes yeah, i've never seen it with apostrophe k. capital m u r k a i've seen i c a i've never seen uh, k a i just like murka murka that's you just started that murka that's just no it's better just stop it you know how people reinvent the wheel uh, yeah, I set it on fire and then tried to make it again. Okay, and I never make it as good as it was right before I set it on fire. Uh, you okay. should know this by now. All right, so that's an interesting one. So we're just America. Oh, fuck yeah! Do you know yeah. that uh, freedom costs a buck oh five? Buck oh five. Oh five. You're welcome, Amer- you're welcome, France. <laughs> uh, you know what else we have that what? we just got out of? We just skated. We just got through a scathing one. Come on, you know this one. Ooh. Oh, the election. Boom. Because I was going to say Christmas, but that wasn't overly scathing. We have insanely long election seasons. Isn't it? It's the worst, dude. It's not unusual for American election season to stretch out for over a year and a half. We talked about that, right? Ugh. Especially when it's for the presidency. Don't believe it? Hillary Clinton announced her bid for a Democratic nomination in May 2015. Donald Trump followed by announcing his presidential run in June of 2015. And that was the election was November of 2016, I believe. Correct, sir. So that's definitely a year and a half. 
Definitely. Uh, the battle for the presidency went for a staggering 18 months. Ugh. In contrast, the longest election in Canadian history lasted 74 days. I love that. See, dude, you, you gotta get back together with Canada, bro. Oh, I was just you, gonna you say. You gotta repropose, or you know what you should do, dude? You need to ask I'm Canada to prom. No. Ask Canada to prom, dude. Canadia? Can, Canadia? Would you go to prom with me? <laughs> and make sure you make sure you buy her a supersized drink with all the ice. I will. That free refills, bro. Okay. Remember that? Th remember the love hate with Felicia? Yeah. Because she had stupid shit that she did, and then she did awesome. And things. then she redeemed herself yeah, a bunch of times, many times, like that. But you know, it's like that. In this case, they're piggybacking all the good stuff and leaving all the shit behind, which I I admire. Them you mean for like that. snow? Well, no, the election season only being oh, 74 okay. days versus 100 fucking, what's it? Uh, 30 365 times. plus 180? Yes. 550 days? God, fuck. Five, over 500 days. 500 sleeps between when someone says they want to be president and might get elected. Ugh. Who? Uh, who? Uh, all right. Who, what's your next? Oh, I was asleep, bro. I know. Uh, to piggyback off the fact that America has no colors in their money, the United States, I'm sorry, I just said it, I said America, United See? States, Son of we bitch. use identical looking bills. We're living in the age of 3D printing and yet our paper money looks all similar. Our bills have remained the same green color and the standard size since 1929. Well, how about that? Similarly, our habit of walking around cashless and opting to pay with plastic is equally as puzzling to our foreign friends. Interesting. Welcome to debt, mother truckers. Yeah, that is really weird, huh? All our shit looks the same, but sure. Yeah. I guess that's how you can best tell fraud because you know it so well that it's because it's so boring. You know what Americans do too? What's that? That uh, no one else does. What's that? They all have different ones. Yeah. Leave milk and cookies out for Santa Claus. Well, d but everybody likes milk and cookies, man. Why doesn't everyone do that? Sankt Nicklaus, Father Christmas, Kris Kringle. All Santa them? goes by many names around the world. The American version of Santa Claus is also quite distinctive. His ever jolly disposition, flying reindeer, and ability to endorse any number of commercial products <laughs> is all American. Lexus is Mer fucking Mercedes. Infinity I think it was, right? Was it Mercedes shit? with the red snake, yeah. uh, red Mercedes in the front? Ho ho ho! With John Hamm going, financing begins now on a new Mercedes. The Lexus season to be remembered. The uh, season to remember. The Audi. Sales event season. The Hyundai Christmas No sales season. tax, bitches. Come on down. <laughs> His love of milk and cookies is also an American twist on this iconic character. Other countries around the world leave out different things for Santa. What's your next one, sir? What do what do does it say what other countries leave out for Santa? No, they don't. Don't look it up. No, I don't they just care. Say other countries Thank they you. leave out different things. What kids in eleven parts of the world leave out for Santa Claus slideshow? I'm not doing it. Please thank I, the gods. There was a click, bro. Don't get don't, mad don't, at me. Hey, what's that called? Clickbait. Clickbait. I, I got hooked. I got hooked, bro. Don't do it. All right, go. You Next. Can, yep. United States writes the date out of order. I am still flabbergasted by that. Really? There's one that I have at the end of this that we hopefully they didn't talk about that we'll talk about that's similar to this. What are your thoughts on that? The United States has always been different. Even when it comes to something as simple as writing the date. Here, it's typically written as month, day, year. But most other places write it day, month, year. Our reason for doing so remains a mystery. But the Guardian has some theories and I'm not going to click on it. You know what it is? What is that? Because we're fucking America. And we don't do fucking kilograms and fucking kilometers. We don't do that's, metric. We do a fucking list, inches. Bro. We hey, do Mr. Precog. Bro, bro, let's get this. One, let's knock this one out. And considering we're talking about it right now, okay? Because right? it's going to come up again. However, we just are not the rest of the world. That's what America is. Like that is literally are you, are what. You, America are you proud is. of that? You're saying it like you're proud of it. I. There are many things to take from being America, and I think originally, the United States, America, right? It addressed a lot of social injustices and inequalities around the world that existed at the time. 
So in my opinion, America should is ba was basically thumbing its nose at the world with its policies of individual rights and the way they did things in my opinion yeah so i think not i think not being the world is good because i think the world the masses are asses and there were more of them so they were more the masses at the time europe was controlled every thought coming you know the western world granted they got us to the point we did but american innovation thumbed their nose at the world and that's what got us to really great heights is that why americans drive on one side of the road and the uk drives on a different side of the road i don't know if that's one because germany they drive on our side but f uh, italy they're on the other no italy they're on italy they're on the left italy is the same as us who is it france that's on the right no they're also on the left germany britain but tokyo's on the right Yes. The countries that are not the same as the United States is Australia, India, and the UK. That's it. I I'm sure okay, there's those a, are all okay. I'm so sure the, there's a handful of others, but I don't know what they are. Interesting that you say that because I would say American cars were well ahead of UK in their development. So driving picking a side uh, who's like probably would have started in a I well H Henry Ford started the assembly line right right but Mercedes built the first car as like a three wheel yeah, thing right. in Germany but it was like a three wheel thing and I don't know if horse and buggy rode what that's side they rode another on that's a question, good question right whether they did that opposite but remember British did tea we did coffee right we we had to be different we always were different that's I think that's the great it can be a problem sometimes but I also think it's one of our greatest strengths is that we're not everyone else do you think it could have been that in the, in the Northeast, in the big cities, they had to pick what side to drive on because of like trolleys? Yeah, the horses and stuff too. Well, the oh, horses yeah. and buggies were on one side, and then and then like the trolleys and trains before yeah. subways started. Right, cable cars. And they things. were on a yeah. different side of the street. So did that? Did it's, that maybe dictate? Did that maybe slide along to the which side of the road we're going to drive on? It's a great question. I like that. That's a great question. We should see once again, who's taking notes on these minutes? Nobody. We need some, we need, I, we need, I hate to say it secretary, but we need a receptionist position. Like, well, secretary, we need a receptionist position. I think we need a secretary, but I mean like a secretary, like in the government organization, not like one with great gam. See, man, <laughs> like, I don't mean like a secretary. I mean like someone to take minutes of our, of our meeting, which happens to be our podcast and certainly not me. I can tell you that. You know what else Americans do? What? Way? Make fun of fruitcake. Fruitcake's in the kitchen. Fruitcake's on the bus. There's a little bit of fruitcake left in every one of us. Dun, dun, dun. Jimmy Buffett, my friend. In theory, fruitcake is delicious food. German is called Stollen, in a way. It's a fruit kind of thing. Has candied fruits, nuts, and holiday spices. And sometimes it even has booze. Yes. Who got the hooch? <laughs> Baby. But fruitcake is a punchline in the U.S. It's often thought of as stale, thoughtless gift, an item <coughs> that is passed around the family from generation to generation. But in Britain and other European countries, Christmas pudding, which is more or less fruitcake, is a beloved dessert. I don't think I've ever had a fruitcake I like. Sorry. I, I, I bet you it's different. I bet you that the consistency in the U.S. is different. It's different. It's, so that's probably that. I assume that's part of why people don't like it. I feel it's less densey, and I think less the way densey. the way we eat the way they eat it in Europe, they eat a lot with coffee or something oh. like. So it's like dipped a lot of times, oh. and it softens it, and it's it's just kind of like. Why that. make fruit cake when you can have pound cake? You know or what I mean? Cake. You know what? Okay, dude, I would I try this. I'm being serious. Spice cheesecake. If, if they did pumpkin pound cake, I would try it. Okay, but cheesecake's still better than both of those. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Cheesecake is if, the most amazing if thing ever. If I were lactose intolerant, you would just I, would just, I would eat on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's okay. gross. You're welcome. So basically what you're saying is lactose intolerant is the same as being having dinner at Taco Bell because you got to eat it on the can. <laughs> yes. Okay. This, the South Park thing you share with me is fucking That hilarious. you pulled away. Oh my God. Billy Mays here. Uh, do you <laughs> poop blood? Try to pull away. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone loves 
loves eating Chipotle, but they ate blood in their underwear. You can have up to a quart of blood in your in your underwear by the time you eat a Chipotle burrito. Stop buying all those underwears. Try Chipotle away today. But you have to eat your Chipotle. Billy Mays here. Billy Mays here. OxyClean. That dude is a fucking strung in on coke. Did you did you hear about of his toxicology he report? No. You heard how he died, right? No. You never heard what happened? No. Billy, you know Billy Mays Billy died. Billy Mays, yeah. Okay, I you know that Billy Mays here died. Okay. He was on a flight, and it, on landing, he was unbuckled, and he went to get up to reach for something, and he hit his head and allegedly hemorrhaged, and he oh, died. Dude. Like They said it was like a heart attack thing or something, whatever, but it was from this head trauma from like hitting his head in the, on this landing. But then they look in his toxicology, and he's like fucking coked up out of his mind. So like, they're like, no, his, his heart probably just exploded. But oh, dude, how fucking crazy! Yeah, dude was on coke, like all kinds of drugs and shit. Like along with the Shamwell guy, that dude hit, punches fucking hookers. This dude, this Billy Mays, is fucking doing ah. lines of coke. This infomercial racket has got to be. Yeah, you got to stay awake and give me know. a dollar bill. <laughs> Let me suck that shit up, bro. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. You're welcome. Billy Mays. So the day out of order. That's uh, a crazy one. The uh, the follow up on the data out of order. Yeah. I do know the United States military. They'll say twenty nine December twenty twenty. Correct. And in the most of the rest of the world, it's what is it? It's twenty nine twelve twenty. Right. Where we Correct. would say twelve twenty nine. But in the military, it's twenty nine December. And it really is only confusing with the first twelve <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Right, obviously, yeah, when anything you get to is 13, you see 13 in the beginning, you're like, that's not a month. That's the day. That's Friday the 13th. It's got to be the month. It's that's gotta the day be that the Jason day, right? kills all those people yeah, no shit. At, at Crystal Lake, bro. All right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Next. Uh, because I went on my fucking rant, I'm just going to read it. Measuring things in ounces, feet, and Fahrenheit. Uh, we're America, we're different. Go to pretty much any other country in the world. All things will be measured in meters, grams, and Celsius, which is all metric, right? In some way. Yes. But once you step foot in the United States, it's all about ounces, feet, and Fahrenheit. Measuring system is as American as apple pie. And though there was a major push to get the U.S. on the metric system in the 70s, it didn't stick for the general populace, though metric is still used for scientific and educational purposes in America. I've got a story time about that one. Go. Do you remember? No. Uh, Boeing 767? Yes. So Boeing 67 is built. 67? It is a 67 or the 57. So either 57 or 67. It's irrelevant which model. But they switched it's a jumbo to, jet. from pounds of fuel, because oh, that's how everything shit. did, to kilograms. And instead of giving 2.2 times the amount of fuel, they gave it half as much fuel. They gave it one over 2.2. They did it. They, they, they reversed flipped. it. They reversed it. And mid-fucking flight... Plane ran out of fuel. Oh. It's that one that landed in Canada. The little uh, hydro, it, this little fan thing broke, came down to actually give them hydraulic power. Wow. It was so cool because it was like the first time it was ever implemented, whatever. They ran out of fuel. Don't you think, isn't there a fuel gauge? There like, is. Is there? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you got a uh, $200 million aircraft. Don't you got a little, well, the don't pilot, you got an E? Well, <laughs> don't, don't they sign that off? What's it in space balls? Don't they sign yes. this shit? Does he like a, no, no, but airplane. Don't, Airplane. He's the guy that's doing his windshield wiper. He's, oh, he's yeah, cleaning yeah, the windshields. Yeah, right. And he's and he does his credit card slide. Right. <laughs> but no, but don't you isn't there a gas gauge? There is, and it's pounds of fuel, but maybe the pilot just was not. It's on he was on autopilot. And maybe he they're like, Oh, it's half, duh. That's right. And me, who knows? They could have gaslighted the whole crew, right? Like if the people putting the fuel on, yeah, it's don't worry, you're remember you it's remember it's half, not double this time or what it's not the same. We're in we're in kilograms, so it's only half is whatever, and they're like, Oh, okay, cool. So that looks right. You know what I mean? It it could have just been that. What? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Says a snorter. Oh shit. I'm done with you. <laughs> All right. Oh, um, shit. Your turn. My, <laughs> I don't even want to be here. I didn't like I you. Like hey, you, you want to switch chairs? So another thing the United States does, we open gifts in front of each other. Get the fuck out of here. Yes. It's always that was the been next one on my list. Too. Lovely. It's always been lovely to receive a gift, although it may seem polite to open a present in front of the giver in order to thank them personally. It doesn't work that way everywhere. In some Asian cultures, it's considered rude to open gifts immediately after receiving them. 
you may actually be seen as greedy for doing so. You have to let it marinate. You got to let it marinate? Yeah. Like the chicken? Yeah, just like chicken, vacuum <coughs> seal that shit. <coughs> just like the roast we're having on the Traeger. <coughs> you, you want to hear something weird? Yes, uh, I, always. It, there's a Asian golf custom that you when you tee off, you don't pick up your tee. You just leave it there because it's a sign you have money. Because okay. you have extra tees. So there's Asian folks that just use a new tee every single hole instead of reusing. Because you can reuse a tee if it's plastic. You can reuse it for years. But it's interesting that they, perp- I think it's the Philippines. They, I, I'm, Don't quote me on that. It's an Asian country. But they don't pick up their tee after they tee off no to show that they have money. Wow. I thought that was very interesting. That, that is very interesting. It was kind of like, remember how fat used to be? Wealthy, right? Heaviness. Yeah. Like, because if you could, most rich people were obese because they could afford to eat. They could be opulent. They could be. Man, I'm so rich, bro. Bro, I'm like the richest motherfucker. <laughs> no, you're not. Speaking of overeating. You're just well to do. I'm rich. You know Americans do? What? We overeat. How Shut- about that? Like oh, you were talking God. about, I'm not even kidding. It's on here. It's the next Whoa. one. Overeating. If you aren't leaving a birthday party, holiday gathering or office party in the United States with a bulging belly and a bit of a fuzzy head, you're doing it wrong. And while food and drink play a huge role in celebrations across the world, no one knows how to overindulge quite like Merca. Yeah, we do. We do do that. (laughs) Balls and (laughs) doo-doo. We do do that. (laughs) He said doo-doo. Why am I this many years old today? Uh... 40 something i don't know you're obsessed with your traeger bluetooth bro i am absolutely don't burn the meat bro next up is partying with solo cups this isn't so much of a weird custom as it's a funny cultural association the idea of going to a party and drinking out of red solo cups is viewed by the rest of the world as a very american thing to do this has a lot to do with hollywood consistently using them in party scenes. The cups are a staple at American theme parties thrown around the world. That's and we even write songs about it. Red solo cup. Oh, sorry. That's funny. I'm going to beat you in the face. Sir? Sorry. What's funny? Nothing. Oh, you were saying ha-ha. Ha! Red solo. You, you want to be It's a song, Red Solo Cup. It's a country song. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know the next thing that Americans do? No. This one makes no sense. Please. Because it doesn't say celebrate Thanksgiving first. What? presidential turkey pardon (laughs) (laughs) thanksgiving is already an all-american holiday that can confounds foreigners but the most bizarre thanksgiving tradition is a presidential turkey pardon president saves one lucky bird from a place at the thanksgiving table and sends him to a farm instead kennedy administration unofficially started this tradition but it's been a regular occurrence since 89 what 1889? 1989. 1989. After Kennedy, yeah. Okay. Kennedy unofficially okay. started it. So in the 60s, it would have been yeah, 60, yeah. 1, 2, 3. 60, 60, 1, 2, or 3. Right? Yeah. 1, 2, or 3 before, you know. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, We. who cares about that? Oh, why am I looking at my hands? I, I don't know. Because they're beautiful. Yeah, that's the weird one. Stupid. Okay, next. Is oh, that me? Yeah. Americans it. require personal space. We love our personal space here in the United States. Invasion of that space is a social situation, especially with a stranger. The social situation makes Americans uncomfortable and is sometimes seen as unnecessarily aggressive. Remember that Seinfeld episode, The Close Talker? Yes. Uh, Yes. Foreign travel blogs advise that it's best to give Americans space during conversation and note that even minimal physical contact is a bit too intimate for most. True. I tell you what. Do a lot of touching. Hug, hug no it out, touching. bro. You're a hugger. Oh, hell yeah. No I touching. T bone. <laughs> All right. You know what else Americans do? What? It's kind of along the same line. Smiling at strangers. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Walk around your neighborhood, park, or go to the grocery store in the US, and people will just smile and wave at you. Of course, this doesn't happen in big cities, but if you head to a charming small town or literally anywhere in the Midwest, prepare to be <laughs> constantly greeted. It's just another way Midwesterners are friendlier than anyone else on the planet. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, sorry. Your turn. <laughs> I, I got nothing. Your tango nada. Next is tipping. Like cows? Yes. Cow tipping? Cow tipping is huge. Cow tipping? I have not. It is huge. huge Those cows, the cows are huge. Are a thousand pounds. 
I tipped a cow. It, it went on its side. It woke up halfway on the fall. It went crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. It was Stop the greatest, it's the greatest cow tipping ever. My best cow tipping experience ever. I tipped a cow. The cow fell over. Okay, me shut and up. Donald. I, I went. I went Larry on all hands and knees. Larry David pushed me over. I went over this way. He went that way. The ball. Shut and then he fell. up. <laughs> tipping. Oh, look at your sad panda face. Oh, you're feeling it's so hurt. You're one feeling. <laughs> and you're wearing your sexy little church hoodie. Are you the great Cornholio or are you eight mile? Do you need TP? There's no puke on my shirt. You on need my TP for your so butthole. I don't have moss spaghetti. Moss tequila. Me. No, moss spaghetti. Remember, that's what he puked up. I don't recall that. There's, there's. There's vomit on a sweater already, Mom Spaghetti. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Eight Mile. I you said want, Eight Mile, bro. I, I just knew he wore a hoodie. I never saw it. You never heard the song? Of, bro, of, you couldn't even have avoided it. I successfully avoided it. Yay me. Where's my trophy, fucker? Bum, 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 bum. What if you only had one shot? Uh, one opportunity? Uh, would you take it? No. I go to sleep. I take a nap. Yeah, right? I probably... Should I go out and do something? I'll no, probably, just nap. I'll be honest. I'd probably medicate and nap. Give me napping. Some... That's, is that on the list? Napping? I wonder if... No, because that's oh, definitely that's European Spanish. thing. That's that is Spanish. not American. The siesta-ing. Yeah, Italians too. Greeks. Fucking love to not do anything. Really? Maybe I'm Greek. Wow, I'm really fucking... That was really uh, nationalist. I apologize, Greece. But I think true, your yogurt's delicious. Yeah. And you're fucking... Dude... Pythagoras and Socrates, uh, Plato. What about his theorem? Hello, yeah, hello. you guys rocked. So, Toads, my goats. What happened to you guys? Is my question. Uh, the Sorry. economy pooped. Shut up. I'll shut up now. What? This is Sparta. Okay. Tipping. Back to tipping. Tell, yeah, Restaurant tell us about tipping. goers outside of the United States rarely worry about leaving tips for the wait staff. Sounds unfair until you realize that service industry employees abroad tend to earn higher hourly wages than the American counterparts whose pay structure is built around gratuity and gratuities included like yes. 18% flat across the board on everything in Germany. You can't get the fuck away from it. It's in there. It's like their sales tax. Whoa. There's like a gratuity, which is all. Hey, that's fine. But guess what? If you force me to pay 18%, I'm not tipping extra. Well, you know, shit. You know what I'm saying? That's like the tip. But that's the thing is like here, I, I'm a, I'm a 20%. You have to yeah. earn, you have to earn a low tip with me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I agree. I, I, it's, uh, it's a shitty fucking industry and whatever. So I, I understand. It's, they like, have a hard job. Yeah. It's yeah, a hard job. I know. So yeah. if you can do it, if you can be, do it serviceably, you don't have to do it. Um, there are some amazing people out there. I'll tip 30%. Yeah. And there's some really not good. I'll still tip 15, but like you have to earn a shitty tip, but I know that I wouldn't tip as much if, if it was included because i wouldn't tip extra i wouldn't i'd be like it's included so i feel i don't know if that's a good or bad thing and i also i'm i'm a big fan of keeping your tips where i think they share it all now right like they take a whole oh pool. right because like i know some hustlers who earn yeah every penny that they do and they crush it and then they're carrying some you know the bottom of the barrel person who gets your order wrong four times and gets you the wrong check and adds food to your to your doesn't ticket, give you free doesn't dessert. Even know, doesn't even know anything. Like just totally, you know. Yeah, that. As one Trip Advisor article noted, those who provide service are often dependent on tip income, and generally are grateful for any tips received, especially when prompt and exceptional service has been provided. Yes, Jace. Should we do a tipping episode? Sure. It's just a thought. Like what? What? industries do you deem to why why ty, why did my tire guy the guy who put tires on my car not getting tipped yet or mcdonald's but i got a I got a tip uh it feels like oregano's i'd have to tip or something i don't know and, and almost well a few tattoo places i've been in they have a sign that says tipping is not a town in china and it's all like in weird letters look like it's chinese like taiping no it's i know but i mean like Taipei, but step different? No, Taiping. Taiping. I don't know. Taiping Palm Paddle. Ill regardless. Uh, yes, what are your thoughts tip on that? Tip your waitresses and your wait staff and yeah. your tattoo artists. Okay. So you don't have an, like, 
do you think that there are some industries that are tip, not tip worthy yet they ask for them and it seems blatantly like what the fuck bro well like I go like if nowadays with COVID you go, let's say you get to go food. Well, they give you a receipt and it says tip on there. You're like, I- I'm just taking my, f- I'm do I get a tip? What? what how does <laughs> I agree? So, and you know, and I know there's small businesses and I know they're struggling and I sometimes I honestly, I do feel guilty by not tipping them. And I don't feel like that's part of it. I think just supporting the way we are by getting food from them is supporting them. You know what I mean? Yeah. The tipping thing. I agree with you. If I'm picking it up, I'm not tipping. Um, one of the greatest things like watching DoorDash is DoorDash is an awesome thing, but they've got a service fee and a delivery oh, fee and this kind of fee, that fee horrible. just by choosing pickup alone, like we're calling it pickup. You can save like many, 10% many percents. good 10%, 20% on your bill because you're not tipping. Yeah. And you're not, you know, a driver, which I, if you're going to, uh, don't be the douchebag who gets DoorDash and doesn't tip either. Though. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. you and I kind of, I think you and I are in No, the I same. always, I use Uber Eats, but I, I, yeah, I do. But we're on the same boat as like, Yo, yeah, yeah. I, if I'm picking it up, I'm not tipping. But if I'm asking for you to send it to me, I'm fucking tipping. Well, we understand where, like, the, the industry and how it works. I would concur, sir, yes. Yeah. So, anything else you like that? No. That's awful. Um, you know what else we do? What? Tailgating. Yes. Americans are nuts about sports, but so many other countries. Yeah. Sorry. I read that so wrong. <laughs> would you uh I need you, my I need my beer Googles. Would on. you like to start over? Americans are nuts about sports, but so are many other countries. Just try to talk about anyone about soccer or football in Europe, duh. But but a unique way Americans get ready for major sporting events, tailgating. Hours and hours before the stadium even opens, Americans are outside grilling meat and pounding beers in the parking lot. It's a great way to day drink and get in on the action, even if you're not a big sports fan. I didn't know they didn't do tailgating. Yeah, they just walk up, don't they? I think that's what it is. Like, actually, I've heard stories about football games in like Germany and stuff. They shuffle you on and shuffle you off, like, because they don't want to have they riots. They don't want to fight. Where we don't do that. We don't really have that. We have very well, isolated pockets of fights. Yes. Very isolated. We don't have it's a riot. Rare. We have right. a fight. Yeah, exactly. We have, <laughs> we have three a drunk guy that gets and talks shit to another drunk guy, and then the police come and take them away. Hee hee, ha ha, ho ho. They're coming to take me away. What's your next one, bro? Uh, What's the most amazing tailgate you've ever seen? Jeez. Um, maybe Clemson, Ohio State. <laughs> that was here. You went to uh, that? For one of the, the Fiesta Bowl one, or yeah, the one for the playoff game, the 30 nothing, 31 nothing, shellacking. Three? Zero. It was zero? That's beautiful. Did not, I know. Go to Ohio Tigers. State got a fucking shellacking. I think that's the year they won, or they lost to Alabama. It's one of the other years. They always, it was Deshaun Watson's year. Deshaun, yeah. I think, uh, won, I think they won that year. They did. They won that year. I think. It was it was a nail biter at the end. Yeah, it was like 42, yeah. 40 or something. And I was happy because Lane Kiffin was the offensive coordinator at Alabama. I was happy he lost. Dude. I hate that fucking guy, dude. I fucking hate Lane. I Do you don't know, know where he is the coach now? Yeah, CFU or wasn't he? No. Did he move up again to, yes. to fucking fail upward again? Yes. Where did he fail upward to this time? He is the head coach, sir. Wasn't he at UCF? At the fighting Admiral Akbars of Old Miss. Oh, he's a Reb? Yes. Did is that just happen or uh oh huge. A year this season. How'd they do? I think they four and five or five hundred, right around there. Yeah, that sounds and, about, and that sounds across really the state, Mississippi State, it's Mike Leach, formerly yeah. Washington State, formerly Mike Leach Texas is a Tech. fucking genius. So it's this SEC is turning into the to, XFL. To the Big Twelve. Actually, well, it's the it's old Big 12 Pac- Texas Tech. It's old Pac-12. Yeah, but it's Texas coaches. Tech. Remember, Mike Leach came from yeah, Texas yeah, Tech, right? right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so he's really a Big 12 guy. Yeah. Because even though A&M's now in the SEC, yes, the big they literally took a Big 12 team. Now they took a Big 12 coach. Um, yeah, yeah, in a weird way. And anyway, the other one's Pac-12, obviously. But, yeah. But I will say this. Yeah, Kiffin's about a 500 coach. He's well a dumpster fucking fire i i don't agree. i know you don't agree but he because he because he, he can call he goes to usc bro well, no no he sucks he did suck at sc over fucking rated how about that can we at least agree he's over well i think if he got a really really good defensive coordinator i think 
because he can obviously call offensive plays. He's a very good offensive mind, right? He was offensive coordinator for Alabama, and they lost that year. Right, he was there he for UC. three years. I, I think. know, but he but he lost one. He lost he one did, or two. They lose those. one year. Yeah, they yeah, lost yeah, one yeah. or two. Of but those. if you score forty points and you lose, I don't think I don't know if they scored forty. I don't know if they what the score was. Whatever, I'm, I'm just saying. Bro. I'm talking to you. I know. I love you. Regardless, of, ill. Regardless, like, my most amazing yeah, well, yes. uh, tailgating yes, was, was uh, Florida at LSU in Baton Rouge with Alpha Alpha. Uh, he did not make it that year, but it was all his idea, and then the dude didn't even show. <laughs> Love you, bro. So, well, he's stuck in Canada. Oh, Canada! It, you know, there's ninety three thousand screaming Cajuns, right? And you can just smell. I think they're called raging, raging Cajuns. Cajuns. That's down the highway. Uh, the, <laughs> you can smell the bourbon and uh, <laughs> smell and fucking. And of course, because they're playing Florida, everyone's grilling gators, and they have they have like like little stuffed gators on nooses and shit like that. It was. It was amazing, dude. It was it was an amazing sight to see the whole place just shut down. Like roads were closed, people were tailgating, you know, on the street. It was awesome. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Go Tigers. What's your next one? Following strict alcohol laws. <laughs> Speaking of smelling like bourbon. In addition to being <laughs> shitty joke, bro. <laughs> In addition to being one of the just a handful of countries that prohibit <coughs> alcohol consumption for anyone under 21, some places across the United States still abide by prohibition era laws restricting the sale of beer, wine, and liquor. In Indiana, for example, liquor stores still aren't allowed to sell alcohol on Sunday. Kansas, Tennessee, Mississippi are dry states. By default or default, meaning municipalities have to opt in if they want to sell booze. I like it. When I we lived in Nashville, I went to the grocery store, you know, get groceries and stuff. And that, is that where you go to the grocery store? Is that why you? Yeah, go yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Kroger, <laughs> Publix, well, whatever. Hey, I go, I go to the grocery store. You know, groceries. pick row groceries and stuff. And I'll get to my point, you dick. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you know, I go, I go to the barber to get my hair barbered. You know, you get, <laughs> I wish I could get my hair barbered. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck did I find that so funny? Because you're a dork. So I go down the liquor aisle and I get a six pack of beer, maybe whatever, 12 pack, not a lot. And I'm like, where's the rest of it? It's just beer and wine. There's where the, f where's the Jack Daniels? Where's the tequila? Which state? Which state? Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Tennessee. That's right. Blue. It's a blue collar state or li liquor law state. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, blue so I asked the nice lady, and she says, "Oh, you need to go to the package store." I'm like, what in the hell is the package store? So <laughs> state. It's state run yeah, liquor store. She goes, "Oh yeah, literally, it's it's right next door. It's you know, it's de de detached by a foot. It's just a different building." So I put my groceries and beer in the car and I go into and it's just a liquor store but they call it a package store I was like what the fuck's going on man Pennsylvania has a wine and spirits store yeah they are the Pen the commonwealth of Pennsylvania oh, yes. is the largest single purchaser of alcohol yeah, yeah, yeah. in the country oh my god because they buy all the alcohol for the for the state and then they have these stores open the governor closed them for hours or the day before Thanksgiving, because they were trying to avoid riots and over drinking and stuff. Like, so no one had access to liquor. No. Yep. Not approved. They're finally getting maybe beer and stuff in, and maybe, maybe beer wine and into stuff. a supermarket, but they're so far away from that. But once they pass cannabis, they'll be fine. Yeah. They'll transition uh, liquor dollars for cannabis dollars. Then they'll let go of the liquor and they'll hold on to the cannabis. It's smart. It's, it's a good money move, I think. That's what I think they're going to yeah. do. Anyway. Great money move. Americans? Yeah. So we... What was that last one? I don't know. <laughs> Liquor laws and shit. <coughs> Liquor laws. You have COVID? I think. Bro, you don't joke about COVID. Too like, soon? Like I do. Um, Americans? Mm -hmm. Trick or treat. No Halloween is complete in the United States without youngsters going door to door pillowcases in hand and begging strangers for miniature chocolate bars and other various candies. But outside of America, trolling the neighborhood for free sweets and treats is unheard of. That 
that'd be really funny is if that is if what the fuck just happened if you and i went to the uk and like dressed up as the dumb and dumber characters and like rung people's doorwells and said trick or treat <laughs> and i go oh, excuse me i know bro uh oh. <laughs> and we, and we have our we have our little plastic uh, Pumpkin. pumpkins the and pu- shit yeah with a handle right yes. and oh. then like well, do I miss something local? Or maybe like Han Solo and Chewbacca or something like that. Yeah? I agree. What What's your next one? I think we have like 800 more to go, which is, I feel like I'm pushing a little bit, but. We have 800? No, we have like 644. Uh, United States citizens chat up strangers. Americans' penchant for small talk can be off-putting to people who didn't grow up talking about the weather. Especially perplexing. The fact that how are you isn't actually an invitation to open up. Huh. Don't shut up to strangers in other places. Weird. It's kind of like the personal space thing and smiling at them. Yes. It's all that. It's yeah, all they, that it all, shit. It all, those all inter... It's Creeper, inter, it's creeper McGee, bro. It's all they all inter, interconnect. Yeah. You know what creeper, else we do? Creeper McGee? Yeah, Creeper McGee. Creepy yeah. Creeper You know what else we do? What? We, we peep. We peep things. We do? Yeah, we watch trials. Oh. In America, legal dramas aren't just for scripted television. The very real trials of O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson, Bill Clinton, Casey Anthony were massive media events. And the lo- and the latter wasn't even a celebrity before she was put on the stand. These so-called trials of the century take the nation by storm and news coverage is constant as we wait for verdicts. Poop. What was that one? What's the one here? The one with... Stabby like Stabberson? Yeah. The Native American glasses, dark hair. Uh, she killed him in the in the in the in the yeah. jacuzzi, right? Yeah, she blacked out and stabbed him like thirty seven <laughs> times. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you black out and then? I was just sorry. Defe- I was just defending myself thirty seven <laughs> times. What the fuck's her fucking name? Sorry, why am I yelling? Oh, uh, now I have to look that shit up. But you, okay, I it's your know. Turn, so. All right, Americans. Uh, the, "Quote unquote," refuse to discuss finances. Americans generally do not discuss how much money they make, or how much they pay for certain high-end items. Another Trip Advisor article cautioned: "This is considered very rude and even uncomfortable to discuss." Apparently, other places talk about money. That is crazy. Hello? Yeah. What I found interesting in the, um, if I may, please, just because of my experience, it's only my experience, but in, within the Jewish community. Money is very openly discussed, even at the dinner table. And if you've noticed, there seem to be a lot of Steens and Steins and Bergs in he- heads of certain organiz- oh, a lot of organizations. Yeah. Because they're really good at what they do. <clears throat> so my understanding is they're very open about that because it helps them drive each other. They also have a great support system. So it's, it's very open. Whereas in Germany, for example, we don't discuss finances. Like... I remember my dad was like, my best friend since five years old was with me. And I said something like 20 bucks was in that drawer. And my dad got all mad. He's like, you don't tell them that we have money like that. You know, it's like, um, we broken bread with this guy like 3,000 times, dad. I think we're okay. Like for 20 times. But you know what I'm saying? So it was a very interesting thing. But money's very openly discussed in the, in the Jewish community that of my experiences. And I, it helped. I think it helped cultivate their the the business mindset. You know uh, the oh, mindset. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah, I absolutely mean, agree. It all helps. Yeah. So anyway, Americans do something else too. Yes. Next, watch the Super Bowl, bro. <laughs> Biggest food holiday in America isn't Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Singular sports game gets the biggest ratings of any TV event of the year. People throw massive parties with all sorts of indulgent, unhealthy treats like chicken wings, pizza dips and barbecue but no one outside this country cares about the super bowl because they don't care about football not football football but football <laughs> i'd add the football football part thoughts before before you go next uh okay okay uh, <laughs> yeah we americans united states of americans they do love the super bowl that's it. Okay. And they eat too much. And then uh, I I thought for a long time that, you know, if I ever became president, 
I would make the day after the Super Bowl a holiday because everybody's, if you're not hungover from alcohol, you're hungover from food. Like, you're like, dude, where are the Tums? Oh, my God. I had 96 chicken wings. That has been discussed multiple times. So, and I know, I believe that is one of the most, if not the most, it's one of the most called in sick days for corporations in, in the country. You mean when people call out? Call out, call in, yes. Okay. Don't go to work because they don't feel well. Right. I'm with you. Jerk. Well, we have call and call out controversy still. <laughs> Contra- controversy. We have a controversy. We have, a, we have to start speaking British. Know, we we got British people coming. I know. It's a controversy. Yes. In the filibuster, in the bonnet. In the, Jolly in good. The, in the boot. You're going to put your, your suitcase in the boot. We're going to lift the bonnet and look oh, for the, the boot's petrol. Trunk. Put the petrol in the back. It's by the boot. The petrol entrance is by the boot. In the so back. if you have a lot of pumpkin, do you put it in the boot? Pumpkin in the trunkin? Trunkin, yes. Pumpkin it's in the boot. Pumpkin in the bootkin. Pumpkin in the bootin. Vladimir Bootkin. <laughs> um, all right. So that's it. Super Bowl. Yeah. Go. Next, next is covering up. What? Yes. We who wait, do we do or don't cover up? I don't know. Let me read this shit. Oh shit. Okay. In a country where Speedos never stood a chance. It's no surprise that nude sunbathing is especially frowned upon. It should definitely be noted that nude bathing and even changing clothes on the beach can be construed as indecent exposure and therefore may cause problems. The the German government told its citizens in an official travel warning for the United States. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not there's some terrorist. Don't get naked on the beach. Don't get naked because you could go to jail. Yeah, because somebody saw your wee wee. <gasps> oh, wee wee seeing. <laughs> Someone got fucking like arrested for taking some of the sand off the beach of like some what, like a cupful. Whatever. Well, I ecology. I mean, you're gonna have to be an eco warrior. You have to go the full nine. You can't like give anybody an excuse to do it because then everybody would still be able to do it. You set a precedence, right? So I get them really bearing down on the people or coming i don't care dude i would care like you're trying to preserve your beach all the naked people (laughs) i just want to see naked people i see naked people now the other thing americans do along with the super bowl yeah i don't know if you knew this i probably not more obsessed with the ads in the game uh that's me bro let's listen how dated this motherfucker is dilly dilly (laughs) Ah, that was a good one, that was dude. Like two years ago. Dilly dilly. There's one in Philadelphia has a sign that says Philly Philly right outside the nice. uh, football stadium. So it's Philly Philly. It's pretty funny. That was and a good commercial. Bud, yeah, Bud Light. Dilly dilly. Well, they still have the Bud Night Light, Bud Light Night. Yeah. Hey, I, I hey, hey, King. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even Americans who loathe sports will still watch the Super Bowl for ads. Every brand from laundry detergent to candy to beer will spend millions upon millions of dollars for 30 second spots during the big game. And there's an unofficial competition to have the buzziest commercial by the end of the day. It's a bizarre American tradition to say the least. And while all these traditions are weird, they have nothing on these other slang terms. Oh, they're bait click baiting us. Click baiting. Click baiting. What, I, what I found uh, Foul. I found weird is I read an article a couple years ago that stated that there's one company, their entire advertising budget is one Super Bowl commercial. They do not advertise the rest of the year in any way, shape, or form. And they blow all their money on that one commercial, banking on it. It's going to pay off. The return on investment is is big enough for them to get their money back. That's, you know, and it a, is crazy. It's like $2 million or 30 seconds or whatever it is. I don't know what it is anymore, but it's probably up in that range. For sure. For shizzles. All right, man. What's the next one that you guys I got you have? Laughing out loud. <laughs> LOL. How the Germans don't laugh at all. Oh. The Japanese think it's rude to show one's teeth, which is why they aren't fond of Americans' tendencies to let out hearty, open mouthed guffaws. Guffaw. G U F F A W S. Did you just say it's guffaw? It's right there, bro, in black bro. and iPad. Boom. Speaking of guffaw. Speaking of guffaw. Uh, well, we we're grateful because this is on. This is going to be released after, so we can talk about it. Sure. Thanks again to Proper. Totally, bro. Mister Prop, Brian Prop, for uh, coming on the show. Guffaw. 
Go hockey. Number 26, 1,004 points in 1,012 NHL games. We got to get him in the Hall of Fame, bro. You think? He's, we gotta like, smoke right, he's a cusper, bro. How could... How could one of how can someone who did only what nine what eighty nine other people did not be in a list of some other than that list be like in a uh, the be recognized NHL Hall of Fame? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, would, I would have to agree. And he's he was fucking good, man. I remember watching him. Anyway, Gaffal, yes, go. Uh, that you're so the Gaffal's thing. You're you're done. Yeah, that's it. Anything to add? To uh, that, yeah, don't don't laugh out loud. Uh, in Japan. All right. Next one, it's a little further down, so you're going to have to click a couple. Okay. Insist on variety. Yes. Because I'm on your list now. Oh, no. Americans can't have just one thing. What? One UK resident wrote on Reddit. It has to come in blueberry, vanilla, diet, low fat, low sodium, big, small, round, and grape. Everything is grape flavored. (laughs) Nothing is grape flavored in the UK. (laughs) Maybe that's your fucking problem. Maybe that's why your teeth are fucking falling out. Dude, did you just break oh. up with the UK? First Canada and now this. This is like the worst international breakup ever, man. I think it's my time. I'm sorry. It's I'm having a rough time. Do you mo- just I'm need really to take care mo- of you and be alone for a little while? I didn't get as much sleep. I, sl- look, I literally woke up on the wrong side of the bed, which look, we Britain, learned was the, wrong, Britain, the, right, the Britain, left side. Britain, it's not you. It's checkmate. It's him. Isn't okay. He? I'm Britain. I promise I will make it up. To, I will come on bended knee again. I will beg and plead for your forgiveness. Right now is not that time, but it will happen. Right now, probably I'm just Saturday. Upset. Don't we... don't call us out on our grape shit. Grape is the best color and flavor. The is it? Look, purple soda is the best flavor soda ever. Ah, it's really I like good. orange. You get orange too, but if I had to pick, <sighs> I would say orange. Look, I know you're not. You're not. You probably don't know this, but. Biggie Small said a T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and Welch's grape. I, I did not know he said That's that. That's what he would eat. A T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and Welch's grape. Oh, okay. I, I, I do I do like Welch's I, grape, but I, I, I mean, like Welch's grape. there's other flavors I like just as much. It's true. Like orange, yeah. red. Those red are, is <laughs> so... Flavor. It, red, when <laughs> it touches your lips, <laughs> it's the best. You know which one's the worst though? Of the bug juice? Remember bug juice? No. Bug juice is like that punch shit. That neon greenish one. Oh yeah. Or they came in that little plastic pop top, yes. like a waxy top that you popped. Yep. And you suckled it like a little nipple. <laughs> Such a dork. So yeah, variety. Um, this UK person just she chaps my hide. I I'm, I'm apologize now, UK, but we'll get back together, I promise. Because I think you guys are on swell. Saturday when we talk to Charles. Oh, that's right, Charles. So it's gonna be a short breakup. It'll be a very short break. Though. Yeah. You are on a break. We are on a break, bro. Next is smiling a lot. Some experts think that oh, the reason that one, Americans not. are just so darn nice is because the nation, as a nation of immigrants, Americans had to find ways to transcend language barriers. Hence the tendency to smile at strangers, which is just something non-Americans are used to. Interesting. Ta-da. Never really thought of that, us as smilers. We're also like one of the most depressed countries. Very weird. Uh yeah. But we're smiling. So the next one, you're gonna you're gonna have to skip past a few because I, I already vetted these. I thought smiling, we already did, bro. We did? Yeah, when they smile when they smile at strangers, remember? Oh fuck. I'm Come sorry. On, bro. So you can go to twenty you can go to thirty. Uh, I'm on 20 something. Yeah, I know. You're 26. Gonna go, I know, but I, those are all repeats. I already looked. 26 is a repeat? You're going to go to 30. Yeah, 26. Of course, 26 is a repeat. Okay. Yeah, remember, we overeat. No, it says eat it all. It's the difference. The size of American meals, bro. Same thing. Didn't we ever talk about supersizing? Yeah, and but all that? this oh, okay. says, go ahead, dude. Oh, no, it's cool. You're right. Eat it all. Go. What this do we do? Your, blah, 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 blah. What, what do Americans do? What, uh, what, uh, visitors to the U.S. are often blown away by the size of American meals. Researchers compared the size of certain snacks in Philadelphia to their Parisian counterparts and found that the U.S. candy bars were on average 41% bigger. Sodas, 52% bigger. Yogurt servings, 82% bigger. What's more, studies show that people often gain weight after immigrating to the United States. 
America. I just thought of the best frozen yogurt place. What a country. Fro bro. <laughs> or bro yo. Bro yo. Dude, that's, oh, you're bro-yo. a fucking genius, bro. Oh, man. That's the worst. You know what Americans do, too? What's that? Because we're a bunch of saps and because we bought into this fucking system bullshit. What's that? Go into debt for a degree. Bunch of poop, dude. Europeans in particular balk at the cost of college in the U.S., which in 2016 was nearly $25,000 a year for public in-state colleges and almost 50000 a year for private universities. <sighs> per year. Meanwhile, student. Meanwhile, <laughs> students in countries <laughs> at like the France, Bat Cave. at the back. Meanwhile, at the Justice League, <laughs> um, students in other in <laughs> countries like France and Germany can attend the college for free. Shit, that's crazy. And what's really crazy about some of the statistics what, that I've heard is like teachers aren't getting paid more. College tuition is going up. It's like eighty percent of college cost is like administrative now. It's just pushing paper around, whether it's uh, an anti, you know, these things are real. So like lawsuits for something that happened to them on campus or where precautions weren't taken or all those litigation type stuff, it, they're, the PC world and all that stuff, they're so, it's all paperwork and admin work. It's like 80% of the cost of running a university and the prices keep going up and no one is getting the money. No one's getting the value or the money of it. It's just going into this. At what point Void. do kids stop going to college? Because it's, it's happened. Just, it started. Is it already it started has, with gap years? Did it already start to decline? Because if if the, obviously the cost is always going to go up because of inflation, right? But it's also almost like, do I really even need a degree? Do I right. unless I'm going to be a professor or a doctor or a lawyer? Why am I? What what percentage of jobs do you actually need a degree? Uh, and I I don't know. So here, here's the question I would get, I would guess is like this. Um, well, first of all, like, yeah, what good is a degree nowadays, right? Like, what good is that? Yeah. Unless it's a trade or something. Like, we went to school for flight, right? Yeah, or, unless or you're going to be a flight. pilot. Like, yeah, that was specific. Like, you could, our degree, you could fly planes and flip burgers. Those are or, your two. Well, you can be an electrical engineer. Well, I'm saying, kind of I'm saying, engineering but in, degree. in the aeronautical science. Y- yeah, flight specific yes. degree or whatever it was you could fly planes or flip burgers that's really what it was because it's so it was so niche right but uh wouldn't you rather work in a mailroom nowadays like and get four years of real world experience wouldn't some an, an employer want that now because even coming out of college people don't seem as grown up or something i don't know what it is it just doesn't seem like the experience is what it was did i ever tell you about a we're not supposed to talk about money, but I'm going to tell you anyway, okay? Because we're okay. in America. Yeah. Did I ever tell you my first corporate job out of college? With Chase? Yeah. I got yes. hired in 1994 as a phone rep for $15,000 a year. The girl I was seeing at the time, she's two years younger than me, she got hired a week later at $16,000 a year because she had customer service experience, quote unquote, at Sears. I had a bachelor's degree in business. Right. A four-year accredited bachelor of science in business administration. And I got, she's making more than me because, and I always thought, you folded sweaters. Right. How how did this happen? Yeah. You know, and it bothered me for like a week. And then I realized that because of my degree and the fact that I knew how to study and I knew how to, incorporate myself in a corporate environment my pay skyrocketed because i got promoted like four times you know so it it sucked for like a year and then i was cool well yeah it definitely helps because you need some experience too there's a nice balance yeah exactly to your point experience is way more important than education and i don't that's horrible it's way more important than education poor education in a vacuum well right where you're taught cultural thing like not real it's not real world in a lot of cases like the real world experiences, you you get curveballs thrown at you. College is very kind of protected from a lot of that. I think. Uh, I would not argue with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know what else Americans do? What's that? By the way? I like that though. That's good. Very good points. Salient today. Salient. You're, you're on. 
We advertise everything. Shut up. Yeah. Prescription drug ads are a head scratcher to the rest of the world. Where direct to customer ads for medications are largely illegal. How about that? I love that law. Also strange to non Americans, commercials for lawyers. One visitor to America wrote and read it, therefore, lawyer adverts everywhere. Adverts. I wonder who that was. Proper Saul Goodman style law adverts. The rented villa we stayed in had at least four fridge magnets advertising lawyers, brochures for more lawyers lie around the villa, and adverts on TV constantly with more lawyers. So we advertise everything. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm shaking my head. Yeah, I can't hear that. sucks. I don't hear the I, rattling. It's terrible. I hate it. Yeah. I mean, it's on buses and everywhere you look. It's And it's, you know. Not just lawyer ads. It's just all ads. No, it's, yeah, exactly. Billboards on a fucking highway. Like, you've got beautiful mountains around us. Can you take down a fucking no, you, big no, fucking street no. board? Nope. Next. No. Fuck off. Like even and like you've got the LED ones now, right? And they lead. Add, yeah, the lead <laughs> ones. The lead ones that aren't made of lead. I don't think they might have mercury. Who knows? <laughs> the lead, the non-lead lead lights. Yeah. Um. The flashy flashies. Yeah, they add to to uh, light pollution, so you can't even see the sky as well. Yesterday was it almost full moon or something. Yesterday it looked gorgeous. Oh. Back here, it's beautiful, man. Gorgeous. Anyway. So what else, what's next? What what else do Americans do? I agree. Advertising Sitting in stuff. the back seat. Huh. Hail any cab in the U.S. city, and the driver will likely look at you funny if you try to climb in the front seat with them. But in places like Australia and New Zealand, opting for the back seat is considered rude and elitist. I get that. I prefer to sit in the front seat. I totally understand the back seat thing looking, uh, the optics of it. The optics of it? Yeah. How it looks, you know, looks. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yes. Um, so the optics of it is, is that, that sitting like in the back seat driving his Daisy style. Light? That's not optics. That's oh, light tricks. Super different. <laughs> it, it's a Lumix. The Lumin LED lights. Anyway, is that like an LED Christmas tree? No. Okay. Next. Yeah. Bro, bro, I think your next is becoming our older real quick, man. Just FYI. Makes me laugh. Okay. Fuck off. You know what else we do? What? <laughs> I have one where you could say duty. Show too much in public restrooms. <laughs> duty. Visitors to US really, really, really don't appreciate American style bathroom stalls. Several online forums have been devoted to the mystery of why there's so much space underneath and around stall doors. Good point. That's interesting. Why is there? Is that like ventilation? I would think or air that shit money? out. Is it, is it I bet initially cost? it was money, and then they're like ventilation, and then, yeah, probably So in other places, material. it's a full little room you poop oh. in? Uh, is it like the poop the poop toilet? Like, you know how you have the master bed bathroom? Yeah. And a poop toilet closet? Yeah, you have a poop you closet. You literally have a water closet? Yeah, yeah. That's what I call the WC. Yeah. Anyway, what's <laughs> the next one? I won't Next. say. I won't say. No more. No, I'm not saying the. You like it? The N word. <laughs> the N E X T word. I'm not saying it anymore, bro. Don't say the N word. No. No. Do not say it ever. Uh, I said to say it just once. I would just look. What? Lo it's cause, it's because you and I can work this stuff out as we're, as yeah. we're workshopping, man. The next word. Americans work all the time. What? Did we already talk about this one? We didn't. I don't think so. According no, the, to the a 2013 word. report. By the Center for Economic Policy and Research, almost one in four American workers, or 25% for those counting at home who like to do math or hate fractions, don't have any guaranteed paid leave. And those that do only get an average of 21 days. The U.S. is the only advanced economy in the world that does not guarantee its workers paid vacation. Compare that to some European countries like Spain and Germany, where employers are required to offer workers about a month of paid vacation days per year. It's amazing. A month of vacation days is what? 20, 20 days, right? Uh, that's Basically, correct. Yeah. Maybe 25. That's I'm right around there. I mean, I think I'm 21. I think I go to 25 or 26 next year or something. Hold on. So we only have a couple more. Yeah. Uh, before we call it, we're in the home stretch, bro. We are in the home stretch. We got two more. Uh, me and then you. 
you close it out. But um, thank you so much for listening to us, everybody. We're so happy that uh, you could join us. We are on coffee, co, ko hyphen fi dot com. Yeah, buy check mark a cup of coffee. Buy, buy Christopher coffee. He yes. likes coffee too. Not, likes, I do like tea also. Buy him, but- buy him coffee. But um, hopefully we'll get. You know, we love any support. We pay for some paid, equipment. Really paid for a lot of equipment. I could give you an exact dollar amount. <laughs> don't of do it. How much? Don't I wouldn't do it. Stop, okay. But it sounds so nice and pretty. It's so, I know. We put a lot. We put a lot of thought into it, and we're just grateful though for anyone listening to us. But what what would we ask our people to do before we close this out? Uh, rate, download, leave a comment. Subscribe on the YouTube Review, and the Podbean stars. and the Apple Podcast and the Google Cast and all of them. All the what casts. did I forget? All the all the pods and all the casts and all the the beans Googles. and the Spotify's. Yes. So please rate, review, follow. We're grateful once again. Thank you so much for listening to us, to our both our serious and our fun ones. Yeah. Yeah. We love it. My last one, sir. Yes. Before we call it an evening and have some delicious dinner. Yeah. We avoid harsh critiques. We do? Yeah. Articles about business etiquette in America frequently reference how informal workplaces in the U.S. are, particularly when it comes to interactions with bosses. In a discussion with Americans, when they say, I wonder if this is really best solution, they mean no, one German website warned. If they say, I'm wondering if we might need more time, they mean no. Americans get confused or just plain mad if a German boss answers statements with no, that's good, or just go ahead. That made no sense. Oh, so they we, were just wishy-washy. You were like, little bitches. Yeah. Yeah, Germans would be like, nine. Scheiße on dich. Nine. 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 Not 99 Luftballons. No. I'm here weg zum Horizont. Yes. Some All Horizont. of the balloons. Anyway. So thank you very much again for listening. I'm I'm almost gonna call it because we're gonna play some music because you're you're closing it out. I bro. got un, 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 Unamas, bitches. Uno Mas, I believe. Unamas, this is it. This is it. You don't deserve so this is it. Dun. There was a TV show on pretty good. Philadelphia area. I think. Yeah. I don't think anyone else Wasn't had that it. Hugh Lewis in the news, right? If this is it, ooh up, please, please let, let me know. know. I gotta know. Yeah. Because I need a new drug. I don't agree with this last one, by the way. I don't. Sure. But tell Whatever us what it up. takes. What Americans do. Americans America. stay fundamentally optimistic. Americans and Russians say different things when faced with the same situation. One Russian website explained, seeing the man who has fallen in the street, an American asks, are you all right? Russians will inquire, are you ill? <laughs> oh, I love Where that. we aren't sick, they say stay well. One Japanese guide to American culture noted that in America, you can make mistakes, fail, and it doesn't matter. It's a fundamental feeling that to sometimes be incorrect is natural. Rather than thinking about mistakes and failures, Americans have a curiosity and say, let's try anyway. We got a little America. bit of that. F yeah. We're fundamentally well, flawed and we know it. Kind of. Except for every, the, the every, really patriotic ones. Every human being is fundamentally flawed, but just do the best you can, you know? And party when you can rock to your drop. Pay attention. Try your best. Pay attention. There's there are some interesting cultures that we had there. But I didn't know about the baby shower one. That one that one surprised me. I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't think we should have those anymore. Oh, what? Sorry. Babies? No. We no, shouldn't showers. Have more babies. Oh, definitely showering. <laughs> I'm a big, more showering. I'm definitely I'm, a fan of not being. Are sticky. you anti baby, anti shower, or anti both? Baby shower or anti baby shower? I, uh, so no showering of babies. Yeah, they definitely so stink a they lot. They need to be in an adult shower. <laughs> Don't bathe them in the sink. What happened? What are we yeah. talking about? No baby showers. I just thought no baby, baby showers, showers. I thought baby showers were an interesting thing that we do. That I no agree. I does. wasn't aware that that was a United States only thing. And I'm shocked that. Canada stole all it? our good shit, but left all our bad shit on the on the Dude, stoop. you are just you got a thing and that for Britain Canada. with this grape shit, lady. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna find you and make you drink a grape soda and say, <laughs> "Not <"America>! approved." <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been another You're beer googles. What, what was this? What was this one again? Uh, strange, unusual, and asinine American customs, sir. Like many, us- many, many, many. 
many, many ounces of soda pop. Would you like to close this out, sir? I would. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs> <laughs>